three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Megan Kelly fan... No, Megan ah. McCain. <laughs> I fucked it up. Megan McCain. <laughs> president of the Megan McCain Has fan club. Has she reached out to you at all? She's blocked me. No. She blocked me, and I, I, I didn't tag her in the video because I'm not that, that guy. Right. But I did, you know, I mean, I put it out there into the right. world. <laughs> She's not thrilled, probably. I, I know somebody that knows her pretty well. Yeah. And they said that th she is not happy with my depiction of her. She did, though, after the first video, she lost a lot of weight. It seemed like she put it back on. She did. And it's I yo-yo <laughs> with her. So when she gets thinner, I get thinner so I can do her. And when she <laughs> plumps up, I plump back up. So that's where we're at is that I just kind of mirror her. Hmm. Um, How uncomfortable. She's, I would, you know, I always, because, you know, sometimes I'll go back to New York to do shows and I imagine like, what if I'm in a restaurant and I see her and, you know, what would a, what would a meeting be like? What because I have no... Real ill will. It's just comedy. It's just comedy. Yeah. She's just... She's she, a big public figure. She's a big public figure and she behaves sometimes in a, in a ridiculous way. She called herself a self-made woman. I mean, th these are things that are insane. Yes, that's insane. I mean, this is, a, uh, you know, she's not self-made. And listen, she, I, lo I love that she loves her dad. Yeah. But there's a limit yeah. to the constant, you know, if you want people to forget that your dad is the reason you have the job, you can't bring him up every five minutes. Well, don't you think she's in a, a, a real pickle? Uh, because that show... Is how she makes a living. So she's on that show, right? And so if you're on that show, that's right. one of the things you got to talk about. Absolutely. But I would say if she toned it down a little bit, tone it down. You can't tone it down though. They're off. See, one of the things about those shows that's, that shows it's ridiculous, like this conversation we're having, is yeah. very easy. It's you right. and me. That's it. I let you talk. You let me talk. Right. We talk. We express ourselves. Right. No problem. Right. That's a goddamn battle zone. It's it's a fight. That's a vagina battle zone. And There's you have and great and you have a lot of great intellectuals <laughs> that are battling out all the things. You know, Joy Behar, and Whoopi Goldberg. These are brilliant people who we need to hear from. <laughs> yes, and they speak in three minute clips. But the, I used to like the show when like Rosie O'Donnell would go on and start talking about Tower Seven. That was great. That was fun. Yes, that was, was fun. fun. Well, it she can was, be fun. She, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting what Rosie was doing. Rosie that. would just go on and start talking about Tower 7, <laughs> and it was like, oh, this is a fun morning show. This is ABC Morning. It's a little wacky. Yeah, it's like, I'll get on board for this. Why'd they take her off of that? Did she not get along with somebody? I mean, It was she, a girl from Survivor, right? Yeah, Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Yeah. Her and Rosie used to fight all the time. Yeah, she's like one of them hot Fox News fembot type characters. Yeah, I used right? to I used to do Red Eye on Fox News, which would air at three a.m. They would bring in like all these hot blondes would sit in the green room and they would be nice and they'd be like, "I'm Miss Tallahassee," <laughs> and then they would get on Fox Red Eye and then the cameras would turn on and they would start going Syria and I would be like, "Syria, what the hell yeah, do you know from? about Syria?" <laughs> I mean, but they would just go and go. Right. And it was, and it, you know, that was a fun show because Red Eye was a show that was on at 3 a.m. Yes. And nobody really watched it and nothing you said would get recorded. Like it would, there would be no clips or anything. So you could kind of just go wild. For a while. For a while. So comedians like me who had no knowledge or background knowledge on anything <laughs> got to, and I would wear like a jacket. So you wouldn't know, I guess it would say comedian under me, but not always. And I used to just go on that and just say whatever I wanted to. And I'd be sitting next to John Bolton. <laughs> and, and they didn't pay you. They would just give you a car to wherever you were going. Mm -hmm. And I would just come on and say whatever the hell I wanted. And in a news studio. Yeah. So that was like a funny, but that's when I met a lot of those five. And by the way, they're all fun people. Oh, yeah. They're all well, fun people. Well, I think there's a business in being a fembot, and I don't begrudge them like I don't begrudge uh, bodybuilders who are on Instagram. Right. You know, I mean, like, right. you know, this is my new ab set. I'm going to yeah. we'll take you guys through this. I don't, right. I don't <laughs> begrudge them guys either. You know, I just think there's businesses. Yeah. And we have to recognize that the, look, a lot of people who are really right wing, like women and they like hot blonde women with yes. big tits who really are not into immigration they and don't <laughs> like immigration 
They hate immigration. <laughs> but there's like a fucking market for them. It's huge. You know? I mean, Tommy Laren. Yeah. I mean, it started, I guess, with Ann Coulter. Mm -hmm. Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern. They have a lot of... Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of new ones now. Attractive women yeah. that are... Uh, yeah, I don't follow as closely because it, it starts to feel like you're in a loop. Yes. It starts to feel like with the news that you're in a loop. Well, the best one, in my opinion, is Candace Owens. Because Candace, Can yeah, yeah, because they bring her into these conversations and they underestimate her. You they know, did, I've they, seen that. They several did a times. great thing, and I forget who did it, but it was her and Killer Mike. It was a, it was a, 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 a panel that maybe P Diddy sponsored or something, and it was a. A, a, a panel with uh, thought leaders in the black community, and she was on it. Killer Mike was on it. It was a re and uh, one of the girls from Black Lives Matter. And it was a really interesting conversation. Candace is very smart. Oh, she's very smart. I don't agree with her on some of the right. things she says, but she's very intelligent. Is. Here it is. Yeah, Killer Mike adds context to Ti okay. and Candace Owens revolt yeah. sem uh, summit. Yeah, argument. Diddy was I think in the front row. Just I'm going to mm. get accused of being a racist. You know, what do you mean you can't you can't tell the difference? Yeah. Um, and then Candace was also on something recently where some white woman was. A professor accused her of saying something racist, and she shut that lady down so hard. Yeah, because like she was saying, she was laughing at something, and the woman said the woman tried to check her and shame her for what she was laughing at. And she's like, no, 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 I'm laughing at you. Wow, like, I'm laughing at what you're saying. You should. Yeah, we can't play it, right? No, we couldn't play it. If we play it, we'll we'll fucking get pulled off of YouTube. But it's uh, it's. She shut her down. And there yeah. was also that uh, that Asian congressman. He tried some stupid shit yes, on her, too. She, she shut him down, shut too. Shut him down. Well, he tried to take her out of context in front of her. Like, she wasn't yeah. going to defend herself. Well, it's also interesting yeah. about people like Candace Owens and people. They just live in a battleground. Oh, yeah. She so likes to go to war. Everything's a... They wake up. Knuckles they, up. They get on get Twitter. Like, like, I could never live like that. I'm she such gets a, out of bed like Nate yeah, Diaz. Right. <laughs> She's ready to... <laughs> I could never... Like, to me, to get up every day and go, who do I got to wreck? Right, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> but she's all—you yeah. meet her in real life. She's like, she's a nice lady. I, yeah, I really I'm sure a lot of them her. are. But yeah. they're like, you know, I mean, Ann Coulter. They're all very nice, and then, but they're always, you know, they're just ready. They, they, they live in the combat zone. But look, we're talking about her, and more than a million people are going to hear this. Right. So the, she's doing the right thing. She is. She's yeah. Like, and that, and that's a business. Just like you talking shit about Meghan McCain. Right. Is kind of a business. Right. Well, you, you never talk shit about it. You're pretending to be. Her. I'm pretending to be her. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm stealing her essence. Ooh. Ooh, I heard that's, that before. That's kind of what I'm doing. And um, when did she? How long in, in did she block you? Did you pay attention? Did you, you know, check every day. I didn't check every day, but I think it was somewhere after the first video, which was you know a really really fun one, and she didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> The thing now I'm nervous about is with the, all the new YouTube rules, can they just decide to get rid of my account for, or to just say it's not commercially viable? You don't have a real problem with that because okay. you're making fun of someone on the right. Interesting. But I do yeah. make fun of people on the left. I mean, I, yeah. I did a video where I pretended to be the agent of the climate girl. Greta oh. Thunberg, <laughs> and because I'm like you know I pretended to be like David Hogg's agent. Can you could play that? absolutely play yeah, it. Play that. Play that. Absolutely is that on, play. Is it on Instagram. It's on. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel, and it's it's. Uh, I'm sure it's on Instagram, but I don't know if it's IGTV or whatever. But so I, I, because I, I want to fuck with everybody. Yeah. So I was like, this girl Greta Thunberg. Let's be honest, she has some good points, but a little, it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy. Well, she's like, how old is she? She's too young for me to say that about. Is she like 14? Yes. She could be 50 too, though. Yes, it's creepy. Like, Something's wrong. I turned on my TV and she was like, how dare you? And I'm like, well, why are we starting there? But there's something about her face too. It's like, so, it's almost like, I did know. you hear the story I about the I think she has couple? a thing, potentially. There was a couple yeah. that uh, adopted a child from Russia. And they thought yes, that the yes. child was uh, a little kid. And it turned out she might have been 30. They yes. don't know how old she was. She yes. tried to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> she scared them. It was a fucking horror movie. These they are thought the best they were, stories. They thought they were adopting a little kid, like a yeah. little six-year-old. It's a fucking 30-year-old with some sort of a metabolic disease. Yeah, well, that serves you right for trying to be a do-gooder. You know, They'll never do anything <laughs> again for anybody. They'll never do one thing. Like the husband will try to bring it up. She's like, fuck you, Herman. Fuck you. You almost got me killed yeah. by that midget. I mean, the idea that there are midgets... Dressing up as children and trying to burrow into families so that they can wake up in the middle of the night and kill them yeah. is truly the funniest thing 
that has happened in in recent I don't think she's memory. technically a midget. I okay. think she's something else. Well, she okay, maybe but whatever she was, she has like a growth disorder that keeps her like looking like a small child. Did you see there was a video recently where it, it looked like a kid was getting thrown off a bus? I don't yes, know. If it was, yes, yes, and yes. And it was just a was it a it was a like a little person yes. who was just thrown off a bus. But it was it was it was a scam. Like oh, was it put, fake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got Ari and I both got duped. I got duped because my friend texted me. They go, "There's a pedophile yeah. midget that just got thrown off a bus." It is hilarious. It though. is the funniest thing ever. When when the unzips the hood and you see this yeah. like grown up face. There's a woman who looks like what the fuck? She I does. don't think they yeah. were in on it. No, I don't think they knew. The people yeah. on the outside yes. didn't know. I think the guy threw that guy off the bus and that was the scam. Yeah. And then the dude who was the, the little person in the hoodie, he was in on yeah. the scam. And they the were driver in on was it. in on the scam. But I don't think the people on the street were in on it. So now what happens when the when the when the when these these little people wake up and they're like activated. They're like, I'm gonna kill the family. How do they try to kill them? Well, this lady, she was threatening. She was threatening to kill the family, and they were really worried that she was gonna do that. So she was gonna poison them or something like that. I think yeah. that's what it was. It's scary stuff. It's I mean, a horror th movie. Because, you know, you gotta think, who knows what kind of abuse this little kid had gone through. Well, actually a thirty year old. Right. As as a little kid through in Russia. You know, and all yeah. these foster homes and foster care, and you know they are fucking ruthless over it's, there. It's it's rough. It's rough. I imagine it's not the best place to grow up as a person with a disorder. What's up, Jamie? Are I feel like I'm hearing. Are you saying that happened in Russia or was a Russian kid? It's a Russian, Russian kid. kid. Okay, yeah, this is happened in Indiana. Yeah, it's actually a Ukrainian kid. That, That's Ukraine to the story. is part of Russia. Um, That's okay, isn't it? They had it's it for one three of the years. Soviet 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 republics. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. They had it They're for Russian. three years before they found figured this out. Oh my god. Now, what kind of what, were those three years nice? Like, were there nice memories? It started out good. Isn't that odd to look back and be like, remember when we all went to Disney World? No, before? they were probably like, hey, uh, this bitch isn't growing. I think they said that she was creepy. In the article that I read, I think they were actually like, they would wake up and see her like standing at the door. Like, I think there were things that she did that, yeah, very, very bad. What do you, what does she look like? Do they have an image of her? I'm trying to find out more. I might. Yeah. I saw a picture of her. I now saw what, a picture of her. Did she go to jail? And now? It was real weird looking. Like she didn't look like a little person. She looked like a young person. It was a, a very strange. Yeah. I mean, I hope she finds another family. <laughs> I hope she keeps doing this to different families because <laughs> whatever happened in this bitch's life was so bad that she needs to do this. Let her do it. Mm, kind of do it to the wrong family. They you know, feed you, you to the wolves. You do it to the wrong family. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's. It's. I worry about that though with YouTube because I say, is it you build a whole career, you build people that are your fans, they want to see comedy, and I always thought that like, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this on like mainstream TV, but these are funny things that right. I can do. There she is. Look at her. Oh my God, she does look. Okay, so it is a little person. But she looks, looks like a but child. Strange. It's not like a regular. Look at the one down the middle, the middle and the lower. Look at that. That's horrific. That one yeah. right there. That's terrifying. Ukrainian child. She might have a But it's also, how's 30. she going to kill you? What's she going to, I guess, in the middle of the night or Cut something? Cut your fucking neck, yeah, man. That's true. Bro, there yeah. she looks 30. That's creepy. There's something weird. They thought it was a little kid. Yeah. That's but, so strange. Don't adopt, folks. <laughs> oh, my God. Do not That's adopt. That's so strange. Get that one there. Yeah, with, with, when your cursor's on, look at that one. That one freaks me out. Because you'd be like, something's wrong. You would never like, think that was a murderous young adult. He's either 8 or 22 that everyone's talking about. <laughs> um, I don't think they think 22 now. I think some people think as old as 30, and I think the youngest they think she is is 16. And there's no records? No one can prove no, anything? No, they don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> It's so crazy. She had period. She had adult teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, guess what? She's I, not 12. That's an indication that, I yeah. mean, did she never see a doctor oh, in three years? Oh, scroll back up. Hold on a second. Look at this. She had periods. She had adult teeth who alleges that after Natalia began acting out violently, attacking a baby boy, pushing Christine into an electric fence and making death threats, the family sought out psychiatric health. Healthcare officials, including the Barnett's primary care physician who performed a bone density test and a clinical therapist who treated Natalia, believe her to be an adult impersonating a child. Holy fuck. Fuck. Can you imagine when you're in the doctor's office and, and getting that diagnosis? And they, they do a bone density test on the yeah. kid and the kid's just sitting there. Yeah. It turns out it's an adult. Can like, you imagine what? going in and you're, you're ready to hear like she's got cancer or brain damage and she go, actually, you're, you're raising a 30-year-old from the Ukraine? Look at this. 
In 2012, a judge approved the Barnett's application to have Natalia's date of birth officially revised to September 4th, 1989, officially changing her age from 8 to 22. Shortly after, they rented Natalia an apartment. That's nice. And placed her under the supervision of an Indiana state health care provider so she could receive psychiatric treatment as an adult. That's an understanding family. And then the parents family. moved to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they left the country. But they rented her an apartment and then left the country. <sighs> Christine Barnett then moved to Canada <laughs> with her son Jacob. And they got arrested. An artistic arrest child prodigy, prodigy about whom she wrote. Oh, is that the parent? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's her parent. Yeah. No, the Barnetts. They're yeah, the Barnetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the, the ones who would uh, adopt her. Right. So Christine's the one that... But she took... So she left the husband and moved yeah, to Canada? they're divorced now. It's oh, well, that's, that'll do it. It's a tough thing for marriage yeah. to, to survive. Yeah, you survive. You rented a, an adult. Yeah. You, you rented, rented an adult, adult for a couple years. going to kill you. Pretending to be a kid, pushing you into an electric yeah. fence. I feel like they... <laughs> They had a dinner and they said, whatever uh, in our marriage made us think this was a good idea, we should just separate. What do you got? They got arrested for abandoning her in that apartment. What? The story goes further, I believe. It sounds like. Oh, my God. 2019, prosecutors in Tippecanoe, Indiana. That's your number one problem right yeah. there. Tippe Tippecanoe, <laughs> Indiana. Brought formal charges of neglect against the Barnetts, now divorced, an affidavit of probable cause from 2014 provided by Refinery29 refers to tests performed by Peyton Manning Children's Hospital in 2013 that seemed to contradict earlier medical reports about Natalia's age. Investigators at the time found Natalia's claims that she was a Ukrainian child who had been abandoned by the Barnetts credible. But Michael Barnett's attorney told the Daily Mail that the charges had been filed because another couple perhaps convinced by Natalia that she was a minor, had petitioned to become her guardian. Oh, my God. She tried to rope another family. She's in. good. <laughs> She's good. Explaining Natalia was living on her own, and a couple wanted to become her guardians. Thinking she was still a child, the couple tried to overturn the 2012 result. So they tried to overturn her fucking age. And, and adopt her again. Despite new tests commissioned by that couple, the court upheld the original result, which maintained that Natalia was an adult. The couple later dropped their guardianship petition once she tried to kill them, too. Wow. <laughs> now, wh where is the... Where, I that last part. Where is, the, <laughs> where is Natalia today? <laughs> where is Whereabouts she? are currently unknown. Her yeah. age remains a subject of much debate. She's touring with Skippy from Family Ties. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're she's doing clubs in Connecticut. Yeah, she's on the Blues Clues tour. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's, I mean, listen, you know, that's a guest. You yes. want to get a guest? Ooh. That girl. I would have someone in the room with a gun. You mm. sit her on a stack of phone books? I might have you a gun. You might adopt her. I might have a gun. <laughs> you might bring there. her home. Uh-uh. She might, you, you might fall for it. You no. might, you know, she might be riding Marshall around the house. No, I have real kids. Yeah, that's I know true. Kids. <laughs> I understand kids. It is wild when you, could, do you think, could you ever get duped like that? Yeah, you could get duped. Yeah. If someone's really, really, really good and you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you work, you're you working, just work too hard. You're, you're working hard. You just drink come. a little bit. Maybe you're on some antidepressants that make I, you a little loopy. I wonder if the parents are like, "How good of parents are we?" Right. That for three years we didn't know that we had a thirty year old psychopath <laughs> living in our house. Like maybe we're not the best at this. She's got a bush. That was the other thing. Yeah. We found out that she had full pubic bush, hairs, adult full bush, teeth, adult teeth, Ugh, death yeah. threats. Woo! What death is threats. it? How do you make a death threat when you look like a kid like that? What do you? I mean, it's crazy. Like Chucky. He yeah. scared the fuck out of everybody. That's what it is. Fuck Remember you, that? I'll kill you. Dude, Chucky was terrifying. Chucky was really... People say sometimes I look like Chucky, which is not that's nice. That's not but true. There that, are, those I people are mean. I agree, but there's a lot of people on YouTube that like to just let it fly. <laughs> you should, they really like to let it fly. You're not supposed to read that stuff. I you're know, but sometimes I do. I don't know about that, but you're I... You're getting I, a little too famous to read YouTube comments. I read the stuff, and sometimes it's brutal. Yeah. And sometimes I'll answer, like never on YouTube, but sometimes on IG, Instagram, I'll answer and say something back. I One guy said something to me once... And I said something back to him. I went, because I looked at his page and it was just his chick holding a bunch of other people's kids. So I said, why don't you impregnate your girlfriend so she doesn't have to run around with other people's kids? <gasps> so it was wild. Wow. And then they deleted my comment. Whoa. Yeah. When he was going after you, He you was going after, after me. I went back at him. And they deleted and yours. And they deleted my comment. Wow. This is the world we're living in now. Mm. Well, you shouldn't. It wasn't appropriate for me to go to his page. Well, it's yeah, natural, it was, though. It was wrong, you, but I did it. It's counterpunching. It's yeah, natural. It was just, I was trying to, you know, this is my job. Yeah, you get him. You got to go. Yeah, you're better off. Look, I understand people that are sitting in a job somewhere, sitting in a cubicle, angry. 
and they see someone like yourself or like me or any and Jamie, I'm sure he gets hate too. Yeah. And they just get fucking angry. Maybe you said something stupid. I say something stupid all the time. Me too. And then they want to come get you. And they want to yell at you or make you feel like shit or say right. something awful. Yeah. Something really mean. And so sometimes it gets, gets you. you. Sometimes yes. it'll get you. But I would rather give them that. This is what I, right. this is what I feel. I'd rather let them. Let them have it. Let it go. Say it. Take your shot. Take, no, but this is how I feel. I'm not. It's not personal. Right. Like I get it. Like I used to be me it, when I would. I mean, I used to be you when I was uh, young and coming up. But there was no internet to do this. If I had the internet, I guarantee you, I would have said some horrendous, ridiculous shit on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, right. YouTube comments. No doubt. We all would have. Everybody would have. Yeah. I don't want to read them. I don't want them. I don't want them to upset me, and I don't want to be upset at them. And if I see them, I don't want to know they said it because it's not real. Right. It's not real in that it is their real thought, and they did write it, but they don't really know me. Right. And their thought, and they, a lot of it is just, it's fun. Sometimes it's fun I'll just respond somebody. to somebody, and they'll go, "Hey," and they'll totally like they'll say something nasty, and then I'll respond, and then they'll go, "Hey, just kidding. Uh, Love course. the podcast. Normal." And it's just like, "Oh, they just want interaction." Yeah. And that's why. Why they said that I look like a potato skin. Well, they're just fucking people yeah. are angry, man. Most right. people's lives suck. Yeah, a lot of people, it's not great right now. No, it's yeah. and even if it was not not even though the economy's doing better, right. the vast majority of people are not doing what they want to do with their lives. Yeah. There's, and, and most people at some point in your life have experienced, I'm sure you've had have, jobs like that that yeah, are fucking terrible. Absolutely. We've yeah. all been there. We've all been there. And that feeling of frustration when you see someone on YouTube, and it's so easy to just say something gross and mean. We all do it as comics, you know, yes. uh, you know, we, because we'll see somebody, we'll see the trailer for somebody special or whatever, and we'll be like, ugh, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. And it's like, why we shouldn't be focusing on that, but it's too much, it's a lot of fun yes. to commiserate with people yes. in the show shared hatred of something. And when someone's doing yeah. well, like yourself, your videos yeah. start picking up a little steam, yeah. people start recommending it, it's it's fun to shit on you. Yeah, absolutely. Bring you down. Fuck him, he's yeah. not funny. That Megan McCain doesn't even sound like her. Yeah, 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 that's true. My favorite comment is just when someone will write, he's fat. <laughs> that's my favorite comment. Someone will write, he's fat, 300 <laughs> likes. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <clears throat> he doesn't even sound like her. Right, yeah. That's a terrible impression. Right. It sounds like him. Right, yeah. <laughs> I went to see, uh, well, I, I was working with uh, Otto and George way back in the day. Yeah, Long Island and, guys, uh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And we were, uh, we were working at uh, uh, Dangerfields in Manhattan. Yeah. And uh, Joker. some lady, he's, you know, he would, Otto um, had a puppet named George, and he would do the, you know, the, he would work the puppet, and the puppet would say fucked up things. And Otto would be like, hey, how are you saying that? That's terrible. <laughs> and uh, I remember this lady going, his lips are moving. Right. Because <laughs> he didn't even try. He, didn't, yeah. he was like the worst ventriloquist. Yeah. Like, he was never trying to just do that. He wasn't trying to do that at all. He moved his lips. And she yeah. couldn't even concentrate on the jokes. Yeah. The puppet was saying the most horrendous, <laughs> fucked up, ridiculous jokes. And she was like, his lips are moving. Yeah. It's, it, it, yeah. They were, they were amazing, man. Th that, to me, is like so funny how somebody could just key in on something like that while the entire audience is laughing and yes. having a good time yes. everyone's having a great time slips and moving and it's they, not real yeah right <laughs> she thinks she's focusing in on the important part and it's that everyone else terrible. is wrong right yeah. the other 300 people that are dying on the floor are wrong look 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 by his mouth you see lines the mouth is we on like a, a hinge the yeah. mouth goes up and down you can see where the lines are <laughs> it's not a real mouth I love it that's fake I mean it's tough you know you, what we do, and you know, you're obviously in the, the the big big venues now. But like when I, I was just in a club this past weekend, and it's like it's an interesting time in the country to get a bunch of people in a room, pour alcohol all over them, and just let them go. <laughs> yes, because uh, uh, no matter what I say, if I say Trump, if I say, and my act is not political, but I'll, I'll mention things that are going on. There's jokes. Yeah, and as soon as I say Trump. Some of the crowd will go, woo, and some of them will start booing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, guys, that's not this. I'm just here to make a joke about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this isn't a rally. I'm not taking your temperature. It doesn't matter. And they just, they're hammered. 
and they're ready to just let you know where they're at. Yeah, you know, well, it's just like a it's a weird time for discourse. Right, it's a weird time for for people shouting things out too, because people think their opinion is more important than it's ever been before because of social media. Right, people are used to expressing themselves. Right, and I mean, <laughs> and, and some crowds now. I mean, I think there's just a uh, you know some perverse pride in like kind of putting you through it. Yeah, you know, where I'll be like, you guys are animals, you fucking yeah. animals. There's yeah. a huge yeah. applause break. Yeah, we got you. You know, I was like, where did they hand out tickets to the show? Didn't urgent care you know they love it they're clapping you know yeah so well they're looking for something that's different than most of what you're getting on television and in websites yes. you're getting this fucking politically correct woke nonsense right and, and people are rejecting it look yeah. charlie's angels fuck you terminator we don't want it fuck you yeah get woke go broke yeah that's, that's what, what people it is. are saying now they're and like they're done with it yeah they're done yeah people are sick of it and the, this business people don't realize the business we're in doesn't have a soul they don't care so eventually it's going to swing back the other way oh yeah because money. they yeah it's money yeah joker did great Yes. These things do well. Yes, and that's a fucked up movie. It's a man. fucked up movie, and it was great. And it I think it's great. That I mean, you know, look at Roseanne. Yeah. Twenty five million people tuned in to the premiere of Roseanne. Do you know how much money that must have cost ABC to fire her for that? A lot. It was yeah. so dumb. <clears throat> and I mean, it took me a while to convince her to come on the podcast. Yeah, she was supposed to do it a long time ago. And dude, we had fucking camera crews trying to get to my house. Crazy we had camera crews outside our old studio where we used to be. It was right. madness, man. I mean, it was it was crazy. And like, and that's that one thing. By the way, is extremely insulting and fucking stupid and archaic. Do you think you just find me? I'm going to talk to you. Right. You think you put a camera in front of me right. now? Your, your fucking rudimentary interview skills? Yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, you got me. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, here, here. Let me give you my statement. Here, I'll <laughs> right. give you the scoop. Fuck right. you. Do I'll you say a bunch of shit you can't talk? You can't put on your air. Do you? Will, will you just walk by them? I'm like, I'm not interested in talking to you. Right. Yeah. This is not how it works. You don't just show up to get an interview. You schedule it through. Right. There's like proper channels. channel. There's yeah. proper channels. Yeah. yeah. You know how to do it. They what? know how to do it. They just think they're going to be like, this is news. You guys are archaic. You're right. not even real. Yeah. It's like you a guys gotcha. are fucking shaman. And does anyone care? Does anyone? Is there real money in that anymore? Is there no. real money in Justin Bieber having sushi? Does anyone care? Oh, uh, I'm sure some people care with the websites. There's okay. a lot of clicking on T TMZ makes a shitload. Of I money. see other comics sometimes that take pictures with famous people and I go, what are you doing? Stop mm. doing that. <laughs> Stop doing that. Uh, no one wants that. They do it for the gram. It's the worst thing in the world. You have just a picture with a famous person that's miserable. I was going to ask you for a picture after this. Yeah, it's like, let's not. Let's <laughs> not. <laughs> Ugh. It's the worst thing ever. I yell at friends. <clears throat> I go, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. Well, people like to be associated with someone who's cool. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You get a picture with Josh Homie from Queens of the Stone Age. It's like, like a cool thing, I guess. Look at me. Yeah, but these people are pulling out people that were in like 90s sitcoms. They'll right. just pick a guy out of an audience. It was on like Homicide, Life on the Street. Right. And they'll be like, hey, it's me. And I'm like, let him be. It's Ice T. Yeah. <laughs> let this guy Ice T has been a cop longer than he's been a rapper. He's been I'm a cop forever. Isn't and that so weird? Remember, I'm a motherfucking cop killer. Yeah. He had a song called Cop Killer. He's a good, he's just a good <laughs> TV cop. Yeah. You know? That show's got to be soul sucking, though. Yeah. I bet you just can't wait to spend money. I think after a while it becomes just it's a routine job it's like anything else and no one cares anymore like you know there's shows that we all as comics do that are just routine jobs you know mm -hmm. things we just show up and they're like okay here we go and here are the topics and make some jokes and then it's like boom 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 I know but at a certain point in time you gotta be planning your escape you gotta have enough money like when I was on like season 5 of Fear Factor I remember thinking I don't know how much longer I can do this what was it about it that it was, it was just too much repetitive it was the same thing over and over again we did 148 episodes Episodes. Right. It was just after a while, it was just like, Jesus Christ, how many animal dicks can you serve people? Right. How many times can you throw them off buildings? Yeah, yeah, it's enough, <laughs> enough already. <laughs> it was just. Um, There's no amount of money to get you to come back to do that or something like that. I did come back in 2011. Right. I came back. But I didn't have as, I, I didn't have as much money back then. And also, it was a lot more money than I got the first time. It was like a big deal because they were good. Well, I think it was. I don't, I don't. I honestly don't remember about the money part. But it was a big deal that it was going to come back. But I immediately regretted it. Like immediately, I was like, "Oh my god, I have a job again." What the yeah. fuck did I do? But I had. I was just having children then. You know, like yeah, uh, you wanted to. Yeah, my yeah. kids were real young, and I was like, I need like. When you have a kid, <clears throat> I had an older daughter, but I was already paid for most of that. I couldn't. Do you have to think about two children? And you think about two children that are like at the time two and one. 
you're like, oh my god, like this is um, this is serious. Yeah, like you, I have to make you have eighteen years. Yeah, I have to make a yeah. lot of money, and then I think like all the money I squirreled away from the original season of Fear Factor well, that took care of my family for a long time, and it'll probably be okay. <clears throat> but I felt like this overwhelming responsibility to squirrel away more, more money, more more money. But then once I started doing it, I was like, oh my god, this is a mistake. Yeah, this is a mistake. You're like, this is crazy. I'm like, I don't like it. It's yeah, not fine. and then we got canceled because we served people jizz. Was that the final straw? Yeah. We and started, that, they, you, they had to drink donkey cum. And that was it. That was too much. That was it. Interesting. TMZ saved me. That was when you had the moral majority back then, and they would. This was a problem. Like well, that's when all the censorship came primarily right from like right wing groups. Um, sort of. Yeah. Was it like it was the Obama? Was it the Obama administration? Oh, this is the, this is the return. Okay. <clears throat> but what it was was um, the show had to get more and more extreme and it was very dangerous like it was freaking me out right because um they were taking a lot more crazy risks like one of them you had to uh, uh you had a set of keys and you had your partner was handcuffed to a tree and they were attached to a bungee cord that was attached to a fucking helicopter okay and the helicopter was had this bungee cord taut and they're flying in the sky above a giant canyon i mean way the fuck up there right so you got these keys and you're working these keys and the idea is the first person to get the key lock open right you unlock the thing and then boom the person Jeez. goes shooting into the sky. And I remember seeing them going, what if something snaps? What if something breaks? Yeah. What if we watch someone fall to their death? Like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, you just have a bunch of executives going, ugh. They just make a face. You yeah. know, they would just go, ugh. Yeah. Not great. I had a joke about it that they were going to kill us all and then gun us down and then blame it on the terrorists. Like, right. don't, <laughs> don't let the terrorists take away your That's, fear yeah, factor. Right, 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 now right. back with Mario Lopez. Yeah. And I would just joke around. I was always joking around how Mario Lopez was going to replace Did me. Did you ever feel weird morally about it because you have these people that are coming in that are putting themselves in these positions? No, because I would have done it. I would have right. done it when I was broke. I would have eaten an animal dick. I would have yeah. let you throw a puke in my face. Like, right. There's... There are people that we know will do it now. Oh, you know? yeah. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. yeah. Everybody that works at the store. Yeah. We'll all do it yeah. now. And a lot of us have money. And there was the idea that they could do that and you know, and move it on to a career. The only one that's actually moved it on to a real career is Michael Yo. Michael Yo right. was on season one of Fear Factor, episode right. one. Episode one, season Interesting. one. Interesting. Is he a yeah. comic? Or he's yeah, he's a, a comic comedian now. He's now. doing really well. Oh, that's wild. Just filmed a special. He's a really good guy, too. That's great. Really funny. He's hilarious. So some Very people smart. can start oh, yeah. on Fear Factor. 100%. Yeah. One. At yeah. 148 episodes, three people per episode. Yeah, I remember I tested for a reality show on Food Network, and they had me on set for about an hour, and they were like, yeah, this is not. I said I said like three things into the camera, and they go, none of this will ever, this is not going to work. What did you say? Well, they were just basically like, it was called Hot Spots, and they're like, tell us what you think a hot spot is. What's a real cool hot spot? And I was just like, a hot spot is when I try to get into it, the maitre d' tells me to kill myself. <laughs> and then they go, okay, well, let's do the joke again, but let's not say kill yourself. I'm like, well, that's the joke, right? So they're like, just maybe say something like, when I try to get in, they say no. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not funny. So then we just tried to work around it a bunch of different ways. And I would just keep saying things and you could tell they were just getting frustrated. Networks like Food Network love the idea of comedians. They're like, we love the idea of having a comedian come in to spice it up. And then when they get a real comedian, they're like, we don't want that. Well, not they, want, the type a, of they want a comedian with like three tracks. Yeah. They want yeah. like a, a real down the middle, goofy, like not a lot of lane changing. Because I was making fun of like, we had all the archetypes of the Food Network. People, like we had the fat Southern woman that was supposed to be Paula <laughs> Dean, And she came in. She's like, have you ever had a redneck grilled cheese? And I said, this Ooh. woman's going to explode on set. And and I because they said you can be playful with each other, so I said this woman's gonna explode on set, and they go, oh, wait a minute, hold on. And I'm like, you said we could be playful. We had the Asian woman who was like, she just talked about wellness. She was like, we just, I want to be whole, and I want to be one, Ooh. and I want to be wellness. And then so every, you know, you had the guy Fieri, like you know. There's a million chefs that think they're Bourdain. They think they're profound, but in reality, they're just making fucking grilled cheese and they have yeah. tattoos. But other than that, you know, so we had a bunch of those chefs who were like, I'm a hard partying. I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. I've worked on the line. It's like, shut <laughs> up. You've made gnocchi. Bourdain with, with Kitchen Confidential, he changed what a chef is. He changed what a chef is, but most chefs are not that. And, and the reality is, is like, you hear people now that travel around the country and they think that they're like, 
And I love Bord. Bourdain had a brilliant show, but sometimes Bourdain's show was interesting because like, he'd be sitting with a family in Turkey and they'd be like, well, we haven't seen our daughter in two days and we don't really know where she is, a revolution. And then they would, it would be like, and then he would, like, they would start talking about hummus. And I'd be like, what happened to your daughter? Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. why are we talking about figs right now? <laughs> There's a revolution happening. This whole idea that like food, like I think Bourdain was a genius, but- he, the people that have succeeded him haven't done it well. Is anybody doing it that way where they're traveling around? The Gordon Ramsay, they were talking yeah. about him doing something, but the, the backlash was immediate, and, immediate right. and fierce. Yeah. Because people were thinking that he was going to try to replace Bourdain. Right. But if he, if he stays in his wheelhouse, his Hell's Kitchen, and doing all those the shows that he did before, everybody would have been fine with it. Right. Him. But they were like, hey, fuck you. He's going to come, come. Yeah. And you, it t- I mean, imagine doing no reservations now or what is the the new show what was it what parts was it? unknown parts unknown was, imagine yeah. it's like parts unknown with new yeah. host tim dillon no it would, it would not work I would, it would it would be they fucked would, they would come get you yeah no it would yeah. be a problem yeah. and it's also like he was a really brilliant guy that like most people that like they're like oh we're eating food and learning about the culture it's like you're really not you're just having dinner. He actually was. He was. Because yeah. he was curious and interested. But most people that are like, that are, it's just a lot of pre- people are pretentious. Yeah. And they think that they're learning about the culture through food. We're learning about the culture through dining. And it's like, you're not really. You're right. eating in a resort. You're not going anywhere outside of the resort because you, you would get harpooned. <laughs> So you're eating in a resort, and then there's a black SUV that takes you back to the airport. It's like bulletproof. It's bulletproof. You got armed guards flanking you on each side. You know, the one time that you didn't have that, I was on the Impractical Jokers cruise, which they have a cruise. They do a cruise, and they're, they're great guys. And I, a bunch of comics came on to entertain people that were waiting to see them. People were waiting to see them. But we would come on and go, hey, and they would, they would think it was them, and they'd be like, okay, it's this guy. And they were fun audiences and everything. But then the cruise would dock. And you would go to this little town in Mexico that was like clearly didn't exist. It was just like, you know, yeah, all these cruise lines had bought uh, just a certain amount of beachfront and made it a town. Yeah. And they do this. It was called Costa Maya. They, They literally do this. And, you know, you would walk onto this beach and then literally they would like drive you to the little tourist area. But you would just see people running around with bare feet, roosters. I mean, it was like you would drive through like literal and crazy poverty and you felt horrible because you were just on a boat that had 30 chefs right you were just on this disgusting boat with a 24-hour buffet where people are gorging themselves and then you go to this island where like people's bones are protruding out of their body so it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing when you mix those worlds of like food travel and you know education that's often how it is though if you if you stay in a resort in a country like mexico yeah. i was in uh, punta mita yeah the four seasons beautiful resort man. yeah it's so pretty i've and been they kidding have, they job. have these gore these uh golf carts yeah and you just ride the golf carts around the resort right yeah well we decided to take the golf cart off the resort say so like what what happens if we go down this right. way <laughs> So we talked to the guy at the booth. We said, can we go down this way? He's like, um, yeah, I mean, you can. Sure. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So we go down this way. Me and my fucking wife and our yeah. little kids. In the golf drive. cart. Yeah. I think the oldest daughter was with us too. And we we go into the town. And um, as we're in the town, um, we notice that there's a fucking armored vehicle with like a tank. Jeez. With, with metal plate on the front of it with m- guy with a machine gun. Standing on top of the fucking tank, like in like a turret, right? And and then like sta- ready to rock. What were you at staying at Hotel Rwanda? No, like, no, no, f- no, no, yeah. no, no. They have it set up to protect the resort. Oh, and I realized I'm like, oh my god, this is a military base to protect the resort in case some shit goes down. Wow, this is crazy. That's crazy. They were sitting there ready and waiting, just, to just sitting on the tank. Yeah, mow people ready down. to go, just in case they had to drive a few like a quarter mile. In towards the resort. That's wild. Because you got to realize, like, I mean, when we were there, fucking Halle Berry was there, and all these yeah. famous folks were there. Like all these. Yeah, fucking- so they don't want that in the news. Oh my god, they don't want Harry Halle Berry's head on a pike. <laughs> Being walked around that town in Mexico. So that doesn't do anything good for the numbers. No. Well, you saw what happened with that Mormon family in, in Mexico. What happened? No. Did Every now and then, something bad, somebody goes somewhere and they it just- They gunned down this family. They gunned down this wife and children and were, girls. Weren't they missionaries, though? Yes. They Which were is Mormon. sad, but it's also no, like- No, no, no. Not missionaries. They lived there. Oh, okay. They, what they is is that- What they is. They branched off yeah. from uh, Utah in the 1800s when they changed the polygamy laws, and they started up these colonies in northern Mexico. 
Because back then, in the 1800s, before cars, it really didn't fucking matter if you lived in Mexico or the United States. Right. Like, it was just kind of the same. You're right. on a horse. You're Joe on a Rogan horse, comes sucks. out for open borders. Here we go. There's the clip. Maybe it'll fix everything. Right. Um, so, they, you know, Mitt Romney, his family... It's from Mexico. Interesting. Yeah, Mitt Romney's dad was born in Mexico. They seem like never the run least Mexican people ever. They're Mormons. Wow. But they're Mormons who wanted 150 wives. They just wanted to go on a wild fuck fest right. for Jesus. <laughs> and the only way to do that is over the border. You got to go over the border. So they set up these towns. So they set up these fucking compounds. Of Mormons. Mormons with guns. Over, in Mexico. Yeah, over the border in Mexico, northern Mexico. And apparently... Um, they, the cartel and them had beef, and they put out a fucking hit on this family, and they, they shot down the wife, the daughters. I mean, it's just horrific shit, man. Interesting. They, they killed and I think, a bunch of them. I think this was recently, right? And I think- A couple it, weeks ago. And Jamie, there was an article, rec I think there was an article that what people said was kind of like victim blaming, where they're like, the New York Times ran it, where they're like, this family had a violent history. Oh, God. Did they really say yeah, that? Yeah. There was a New York Times article about this family, <laughs> and I, I'm remembering it now, where they were basically like- this family's had a vi long violent history, or their name has been synonymous with violence, which oh, is an interesting man. article to write. You know, right after they were massacred. Well, sometimes you read articles that are written, and you just like, do you remember when Baghdadi died? And yeah, they, they killed Baghdadi, and they they said um, there was uh, a Washington Post called him an astute religious scholar. That's hilarious. You're like, uh, yeah. he's the fucking head of ISIS. They threw right. gay people off the roof. Right, right. Yeah. It's also weird, though, that we're... St I don't even... Like, when they're like, we killed Big Daddy, it's like, who's Big Daddy again? Big Daddy. Big Daddy? <laughs> who's this? <laughs> what? No one... It's... We you know what it's like? It's like if you're paying attention to, like, like Division I two college yeah. school right. baseball players. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> pay attention it's like There's we so many. we gotta get over we can't live in the psychic terror of isis forever remember isis they used to just release a lot of content online they would saw people's heads off with those rusty things it looked like they were doing it up the block in a warehouse in studio city to be mm -hmm. quite honest i'm sure they were i'm sure that the cia wasn't doing that but it was a little weird like uh, these videos would drop and then everybody would be like riveted and then they would just start beating the war drums again they'd be like it's yeah. time to we got to go to war look at look at these people they're doing horrible things and then that hasn't happened in a while so we don't we're not even thinking about ISIS well there was uh they trot ISIS out yeah when when they need like to invest us in something. Well, there's not that many of them realistically anymore. Yeah, there's. I, they're I remember still plotting shit, but you know their numbers have been diminished pretty substantially. Yeah, I think you've said it on this show, and I, I had a guy in my show. This guy John Kiriakou was a CIA guy who said, "Listen, we had decimated Al Qaeda within a week or two of being in Afghanistan." Yeah, I like. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up with you because this yeah. is a conspiracy that I just remembered while we were talking about this. Okay, do you remember when there was a journalist that was murdered? Daniel was like, Pearl. First guy to be beheaded. Correct. And the, the the conspiracy theory was he was beheaded by someone who was other than, uh, was it from Iraq that they were supposed to be? I believe so. Was it Taliban that supposedly did it to him or some other sect? I, I'm trying to think. I don't think it was a Taliban. I think he was in, Daniel Pearl, I think, was in Iraq, right? Pakistan. He was in Pakistan. Pakistan. And he was, I, I guess it was Taliban or, you know. But what the, the conspiracy theory was, they were paying attention to the size of the men who were behind him. Yeah. And they were like, this, this does not fit with our profile of Pakistani or Muslim men. This looks like an American. He looks like a big country fed fucking American assassin. Right. And that they did this sort of as a false flag. Right. So it was just a guy that looked like Brendan Schaub standing behind exactly. Daniel Pearl. Yeah. yeah. Like you and Brendan Schaub. Uh, yeah, back just, to back. just sawing off his head. Yeah, they were like the Which hands we would both too big. I'm sure he would for uh, yeah, sad card. Anything for for anything for, <laughs> for free know, dental. Just free dental. We would do it. <laughs> but um, they they said the hands were too big. Like the guys were too well, thick. I mean, remember all the photos of Bin Laden. A lot of different photos of Bin Laden oh, popped yeah. up, and it it was like nine different guys. Yeah, it, yeah. it really did look like it was like not the same person nobody in the seal community has ever given me a straight answer whether or not they believe the official story well they all died right seal no, team no, no. six no, no no the guy who killed him is is alive been, yeah he's but been on tour aren't a lot didn't a lot of people in seal team six die they in died a, after in that a, in a crash yes yeah. yes yes i mean it's odd what are you saying I don't know. I mean, it's tin just strange. Hat? Are you going tinfoil hat on me? I'm just saying this. This could, you know. you love tinfoil. I mean, I think. I, <laughs> You're a fan. I, I think right now, 
with with what just happened with <clears throat> Epstein, people mm-hmm. are you can't get away with this stuff anymore. Well, what happened with Epstein? This is what I like about it. Yeah, it's it was so blatant and so, so blatant. outrageous that people go, "Hey, maybe they did fucking kill Kennedy." Yeah, like yeah, they maybe absolutely they did. did. Maybe and they I was just did. doing shows in Fort Worth, and I was looking at these audiences, and I was going, "They'd kill him again." Yeah, they'll kill him again. Give these people a couple of shots of tequila. Another shot goes right to Kennedy's head. Well, if there was another one like Kennedy, like right. let's let's think if someone took over after Trump and this yeah. guy was trying to get rid of the NSA and get rid of the CIA, yeah, and and you know, and then there was, was some the sort mafia of mafia and industrialists, yes. and there yeah. was some, and the mafia fucking got him into office in the first place, hundred so percent. They, they yeah. were like, hey, you fucking piece of shit, yeah, we're the reason why you're here. We rigged Chicago for you, and so then yeah. he has this military blunder, the Bay of Pigs, and so then the military's after him. Everybody's angry. He the says Cubans he wants to splinter the CIA yeah. into a thousand pieces and give all like peacetime intelligence gathering capability to the military. If we had someone like that yeah some guy like that and by the way he was fucking everything that moved too yeah i mean and he was different world doing drugs then. and everything Woo! you know he, he was, was enjoying meth. himself he yeah was on meth. that's crazy they had a doctor dr feel good that's where the name came from and the they would go motley crew song dr feel good feel good and it was yeah. kennedy's doctor yes wow yes Yes. That's when being president was a great job. Well, they all were on it. That's yeah. how they fucking got the party moving. Yeah. Just just meth heads. You're busy, man. You Running, got things yeah, you, to do. It's hard. Could. Yeah, it's true. I mean, listen, this is the argument for Trump being on amphetamines right now. Yeah. How the fuck else are you going to run a country? Yeah. You have to you have to be a little amped. A little amped up. He's definitely amped. He's got a little piece of something. But I like I like seeing him I like seeing him, you know, when he goes big. What is it? Sidebar, uh South Dakota today started a new uh, campaign anti meth campaign, but it is uh, on meth dot com and <laughs> yeah. meth. We're on it is the slogan that oh has my been over four hundred fifty grand. I mean, there's not out. anybody. In- what? Did you spend how much? Four hundred fifty grand of taxpayer money to figure this out. Dude, oh my god! This meth is why addiction. people hate the government because nobody was able to stop this and say, hey, this is not the best. This is the dumbest fucking ad campaign I've ever seen in my life. Meth, we're on it. That sounds like a fucking Onion article. It's like a rap song or something. <laughs> Bad rap song. <laughs> this is so... Doesn't it da- seem like an Onion article? I love what it says. It goes, South Dakota has a problem. There isn't a single solution because meth is widespread, but we can approach it from different angles so it doesn't take over counties, towns, neighborhoods. Let's work together. Meth, we're on it. Um, God. What's up with that fucking brown water? Turn that back up. Put that back on. How about you fix that fucking toilet water you got your kids swimming around in? Yeah. Look at that water. It's disgusting. Yeah, meth you is probably- You got more than one problem. Yeah, meth is not even in the top 10 problems <laughs> in South Dakota. <laughs> meth is what you need to get on to fix the other problems in South Dakota. The whole town council's got yeah, some Yeah, you need meth. to start cleaning. But Epstein, they just charged guards. I mean, this is hilarious. Yes, yes, yes. This is a very funny comic. Nick Mullen on Twitter was like, oh yeah, this is the justice we all wanted. The guards. You well, know? no, here's what's Not good. The, Two prison yeah. guards tasked with watching Jeffrey Epstein on night he killed himself. <laughs> they should fucking charged with falsifying records. And here's, conspiracy. And conspiracy. Here's why that's good. Somebody paid those guys and they're going to sing or they're going to die. Something's going to happen. Either they're going to take those guys. And I think it's gonna- a way to satiate the public. I don't think there's, I mean, I don't think that Barr, the attorney general, has any real desire to get to the bottom of what happened. I mean, this is clearly, obviously, a sexual blackmail. Epstein was involved with intelligence, whether it's U.S., whether it's Mossad, it's somebody. His island was a honeypot. He had powerful people in compromising positions. Uh, he was an, probably like an access agent where he would give these intel agencies access to in t- insanely powerful people, ex-presidents, people yeah. like that. So there, uh, if you don't want to open up that wound because it's just gonna, it's never going to stop bleeding, and guys like Barr who are in, you know, this is a guy that's participated in multiple cover-ups. He, you know, I don't think he has any really interest in. He's he's a lifelong government official. You, you could say deep state, you could say whatever it is, but he's just a career. His job is to protect the interests of these power factions in Washington, these government agencies. There's no way they open this up. And there's no, there was no way that they could have had Jeffrey Epstein in open court pointing fingers at maybe prime ministers and presidents. It would tear countries apart. It would be the biggest political scandal in our lifetime. I just can't believe they just murked him like that, though. They didn't just murk him. They murked yeah. him twice. Here's what I want to know. When he tried to commit himself suicide the first time, were the cameras broken then, too? 
Great question. I don't know. How I don't, can we never heard that? Well, we, we didn't see any footage of him. I've never seen any footage of him in his cell. I mean, they, they haven't released any footage of the cameras ever working, right? I mean, from what I can No, but understand. did they even comment on it? Remember the first time that he attempted to commit suicide? I think they lived? got it. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. I mean, I think they, 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 he, he, they found him. They transferred him. I don't know if they have photographic evidence of him doing that. Google what happened the first time Epstein tried to kill himself. Because I'm that's that's an interesting thing. And like, where is a yes, yeah, a very interesting. So do thing. they know for sure? Did they watch the footage and see him tying a rope around? And his then neck, and then they went in and go. Next time you got to do it like this. You right. tie the knot stronger. You you take off from the chair. My favorite thing was yeah. his cellmate. The cellmate that they gave him. Oh yeah, which is like a long. It was a, a, a West a cop who a yeah gorilla cop yeah, from Westchester. Huge, yeah, huge skinhead looking dude, yeah. Italian guy, coked out, giant muscles. Yeah, who killed a bunch of fucking people yeah. and sold drugs. Just, <laughs> just him and Epstein. And they got but along. He was so. He was like the like Hollywood stereotype of the last guy God, you would want in your fucking cell. You'd want to be in a cell with. Big Guido, ex-corrupt yeah. cop with giant muscles. Yeah. <laughs> it's this like, is monster. And connected to the law. I mean, it's just yeah. like, if that's the guy, I mean, that would be the guy that, maybe he's the guy who killed him. Who knows? I mean, he's a giant fucking guy. I mean, guys like that, I'm sure would take a bribe pretty easily and, they, oh, and, yeah. and those guys don't open their mouths, just you know? Just fucking cigarettes. Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he can't open just, his mouth. He's in jail. Right. right. They got him locked up and they go, look. And who knows? And like, listen, if Tommy, they- Tommy, come on. Right, Tommy, do this. Tommy, and, you're here forever. You, you like killing people. I think they got to watch the, I don't know if they can do this, but they got to watch the bank accounts. Now, obviously, the people that are paying off people are pretty smart. Yeah. There's ways to hide money, but- Somebody got paid off substantial amount of money. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere, that they might not have. You don't think so? This is a weird one. Like this yeah. one. This one involves so many people. Money might not have been passed around. Right. You know what I mean? Like somebody just might have called in favors for this. Yeah. Where and is said, hey? Is, just hide. Yeah. Where is Ghislaine Maxwell? Oh, that bitch is in Brazil. Yeah. Somebody said she was in L.A. Yeah, she was in L.A. at an In-N-Out Burger with a fucking book. And they staged about a photo. CIA agents. Yeah. And they released a staged photo. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the fuck. She was thinking like, oh, America will forgive me if they see I'm eating fast food. I don't even no, understand. No, 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 no. She was trying to release a message. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was reading a book about, about CIA agents that had been murdered. Yeah, but what's the point of that message? She was trying to say he's a fucking intelligence agent. Right, yeah. You know, that was yeah. something that was actually said by, was it one of the attorney generals when they were prosecuting Acosta, his initial- Alexander initial, Acosta yeah. said that Epstein intelligent. would belong to intelligence. Yes. Well, if you just look at, this has happened- there is. Yeah, there's the photo. So, does it show the book? There's another photo. I think you can see the side of the book. Mm, okay. But they also added in that, that movie poster. That's which right. Somebody swapped confusing. out the, the movie poster. They photoshopped. They took advantage of this opportunity to promote a right, fucking right, film. Right. Right. Wasn't it the Seth Rogen movie? Yeah, this yeah. is an interesting Hilarious. product placement in the yeah. in the background of a human trafficker having yeah. a sandwich. At least she's got good taste in, um, Listen, in food. Listen, she's getting good she's brand got, deals. She's got an old iPhone, so she's showing she's struggling a little bit financially. It's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not on the that's new a, iPhone. That's a burner. She's got a burner. Well, she probably had five different phones. She probably these, drives them into There it is. You know, I think it's hard for people to understand that like elements of the CIA or the Mossad would condone the abuse of children to get leverage and information on people, but that's kind of what's happened before. Yeah, I think they just figured, look, these 15, 16 year olds, they're gonna keep their mouth shut. I mean, we're, we're talking about when, when this happened, this is all a long time ago, right? It like, wasn't that long ago. Like how long ago did it start? I mean, it's well, it's 90s, it's, it's 80s? been going on for, a, for probably for a very decades, but right. But my point was, yeah. when it initially got started, they probably didn't have the internet, right? Like, 100%. When did, they, when did he start bringing people out to the island? He got the island, I think, uh, late 90s or early 2000s. Yeah, so nobody period. really understood the concept of social media or where no, it was all yeah. going to go. But what's really crazy is, like, no one's ever accounted for how that fucking guy got all that money. Well, Les Wexner, who was the, the head of Victoria's Secret, was, like, his mentor, and they were buddies, and Wexner gave him... And you know what's so funny about the mainstream press? You know, the Wall Street Journal ran some article. They're like, how could a guy like Les Wexner, who sold women's jeans forever... 
you know, get t- get uh, uh, totally bamboozled by Jeffrey Epstein. It's like no- nobody there thought that it was maybe a-, a pathological relationship and that those guys knew each other and maybe were in the similar stuff or whatever. I don't know. But maybe there was a, a mutual benefit to them yeah. knowing each other. They think that somehow this billionaire got bamboozled by Jeffrey Epstein, which is just insane to think. But yeah. that's the way the press thinks. They're like, this guy's a CEO of a multinational i mean he's i'm sure he's uh, didn't do anything untoward yeah well, i'm sure he's innocent prince. yeah the the prince did you, the interview with the prince was fascinating yeah well my favorite thing about that was i think the prince is autistic or something and the people on twitter were like don't make fun of him he's is got he? some i think he is he's got something and the people on twitter were like hey don't shame him for him i'm like okay can we just how do you know when someone's autistic like there's a there's a spectrum, right? When is it on? Like when do you do you lick a, a, a lot, fucking strip and they go, yeah. oh yeah, bro, you well, got it. A lot of people th- th- now, for whatever reason, it's it's becoming more and more obvious. More diagnosed. It's more diagnosed, and you, I think you've even talked about it before. It's people people are not socializing with each other face to face as much, and so there's a lot of like awkward. Yeah people that you know maybe are on the spectrum and maybe aren't they're trying to ban clapping <laughs> because you know they're gonna ban I saw that they want to do, do jazz hands yeah they want to do jazz people hands have a real problem with loud noises yeah l fucking o l prince andrew forced to scrap visit to flood stricken york as he's called into crisis talks at buckingham palace how sad oh, summoned for crisis news, talks oh right now yeah like it's happening right now something. crisis talk he, they're gonna fucking hang him too. Some of his answers were so crazy. Yes. Well, if my t- attorney advises, I will. He's testify. like, I don't know. When a man has sex, like he went into this whole thing that was just completely. He's clearly he was clearly had a relationship with Epstein that wasn't good. I think uh, Epstein knew how to do it. You yeah, know? I mean, I and think, so did Clinton. So yeah. did a lot of these people. Clinton flew with Epstein all the time, six times. Yeah. And I've been telling people, like, I haven't flown with my mom 26 times. No, I haven't flown with anyone 26 times. Yeah, maybe yeah. Jamie and I decided we maybe flew together 10 times. And right. uh, maybe Hinchcliffe and I have done 26 times. Hinchcliffe and I have probably right. flown as many times. You'll regret that when Tony gets outed for whatever he's doing. <laughs> I mean, Tony yeah. looks like a, a like a, like a a feudal lord that's disemboweling chambermaids. <laughs> so whenever they find the bodies in his yard, you will be answering for that. They're going to find home video of Tony with Joker costume on. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. He's got a, a Joker is on his screensaver on his phone. I love him. I love yeah. I, I I love how he's the nicest guy in the world, but he just has that look that's he's he got looks, a lot of mean in him. He looks he has a lot of mean. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see it come out in his comedy sometimes. Every like, now and then there's a flat you know, on Kill Tony, which is so much fun, sometimes I'll sit next to him and then you'll see like somebody, whether a comic, they might go over by it, and you just see a flash go Angel. through Tony. Anger. Just a flash of anger. And Roar. you're like, This is a real this yeah. could be a real issue. Yeah, and you see a, a, the dungeon door cracks open just a little bit and you get to see the yeah. dragon back. Oh there. absolutely. Oh. Yeah. You just go, uh I'm like three times the size, I'm terrified of him. Yeah. I'm just absolutely <laughs> terrified of making any kind of enemy. <laughs> She's on Dr. Phil. Yeah, Who is this? Dr. Phil found her two two weeks ago. Is no! It? No. Yeah. Oh, this is the girl? Yeah. Oh man, can she's going to start dating Prince up, Andrew. I should call up Dr. Phil and ask him if I can play this footage. Uh, I'm sure Phil will be okay with it. Well, hey, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it at all. It's a little tiny person pretending to be a baby. <laughs> yeah, Phil. <laughs> what did she say when he talked to her? She said it's not true. What did she say? She's really a baby? That, that uh, I want people to hear my side. They say that you scam them. This is Phil talking. They say you scam them, and she says it's not true at all. Okay, but what did she say? Scroll down a little bit. What what does she say here? Natalia now lives with another Indiana couple and their five children. LOL. The man's family, according to DailyMail.com, blah, 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 ordained pastor. Oh, they suckered him in with Jesus. We're all, were you at all concerned at the time that we could be putting the children in jeopardy, McGraw asks the, the family. We're supposed to help, the family says, blah, 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 blah. They just so happened to come across this person that was not being treated right and cared enough to put the effort to make sure that something was done about it, she said. They're suckers. They're going to get busted. Yeah, I mean, these they're are gonna, they're, these they're are just, people that deserve to be killed. <laughs> Hopefully she carves this bad. family up. Yeah, and we didn't get to this. I, oh, okay. Well, you can't this. feel... I was like, is, is that the, the family? <laughs> I just looked at that quickly. I'm like, is that the person that adopted her? Dude, by the way, look at that picture. Well, this is an L.A. agent that represents Greta Thunberg and all the crisis kids. It's a great look. Child activists. 
I do hang around tragedies looking for kids who have it. Greta, baby, you killed it at the fucking UN. You're an animal. Why are you crying, honey? Oh, okay, no. Are there cameras on you? Keep crying. Throw yourself on the floor. Throw yourself on the floor right now. Malala left me for a competitor and you haven't heard her fucking name in two years. Who's Malala? She's a girl that got shot. Again. David Hogg won't take a fucking meeting. I've sent 30 pairs of sneakers to his dorm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tell Malala she's got to come out as non-binary if she wants heat now. That's the way it is. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about landmines anymore. It's all climate. Climate is sexy. Climate and guns. Clean water? That hasn't been hot since the fucking late 90s. Do people even fucking drink water? Wake the fuck up. I got the Covington kids and Nathan Phillips on a reconciliation tour opening for Lizzo. Who is it, Emma Gonzalez? <laughs> Don't put her through. She's fucked me for the last time. Oh. I had her booked at Davos. She got sick. You get sick at Davos? We got a new version of the Paul brothers from Syria. They're fucking hilarious. They do pranks. One of them's missing an arm and they, they have fun with that. It's great. We got a kid with a cleft lip, but he's cute. I want Hog at Madison Square Garden. People are turning in their guns and crying to him. <laughs> they're handing their guns over to him and they're crying. Yeah, this is just Jason again. I'm calling for David. Yeah, just let him know that I called. We actually sent some stuff in the mail over if you could take a look at it. Just a few sneakers and... Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we got a kid. Right now. He has no limbs. He is fucking hilarious. And he does a whole bit about the refugee crisis. You have no idea how hard this kid is going to hit when he hits. Do you understand? No limbs. We walk him out. We put him in a seat, and he just fucking goes, man. He just goes. These kids will own you one day. I will make sure of it. They will fucking own you. I got a three-year-old from Iceland named Gunnar. He loves economics. He's talking about debt peonage. I got him at the World Bank in three weeks. Fuck you. So, I mean, eventually YouTube's going to go, we're not this, we're not participating in this. Are you worried about that? I, don't, I think I am a little bit. Because Gavin McGinnis is still on YouTube. I know. That's true. That, well, that's who I, I want to be. That's canary in the coal mine. Yeah, that's a bit <laughs> Stefan like, Molyneux, he's still on. I appreciate this. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I like Gavin. Gavin's a nice guy. But the, the reality is I think that YouTube seems like they're done with like small creators. My channel is pretty small. Tim Dillon Show. It's not a huge channel. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it, it bigger. Tim Dillon Show, Tim on, Dillon YouTube, show on, on YouTube. YouTube. Please on YouTube. subscribe. Yeah, so that uh, when they get rid of it in a month, I can I can at least get mad about send something. Send positive comments only, even yes. if they're like sarcastic. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be somehow the positive comments you will be look worse. Great. <laughs> yeah, you don't look fat at all. I mean, so we do these videos. They're a lot of fun, yeah. and you you know they, we can't do them on network TV. They're not going to allow us no to chance. do it. No way. No, it's chance. not going to happen. Yeah. Well, what is he at now? Eighteen thousand subscribers. Yeah, eighteen thousand subscribers. Let's see if we can get that bitch up to by the end of the. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, these, my pleasure. I thought I would be able to do this stuff on TV. What? Th yeah, that's no. not going to happen. No, but it's better this way. You don't yeah. want anybody telling you what to do. You, right. You, you can't. The, the, your style of comedy, that Meghan McCain thing, is yeah. fucking hilarious, and there's right. no way. Yeah. I only fucked daddy. Yeah, they're not going to let there's me do that. not a chance they in won't. hell. I, I, play, I played that on this podcast at least four times. You've, you've played it for, like, doctors. You've played it for, like, people that Nobel laureates. <laughs> They're like making a point. You're like, you you seen Tim Dillon do Megan McCain? People are like, what? People are like, I have five Pulitzer Prizes. You're like, take a look at this fat guy yell about his wanting to fuck his dad. I wish we could convince Megan to just like, just, just. I thought you. it would be funny because I'm, I'm I'm headlining Caroline's in March in New York, and I thought it'd be funny to shoot a promo where I show up at dressed as her and just sit in the audience of the View. I thought that would be funny. But I've been advised legally that that might not be the best course of action. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg will stab you. Yes, but, you but that's a great promo. Whoopi what? Goldberg stabbing me as Meghan McCain and mm. then just Tim Dillon. Yeah, she probably only stab you a couple of times before she gets tired. Yeah. You know, what I would, uh, what I would think would be amazing is you in the uh, dressing room, the makeup chair, yeah. getting turned into Meghan McCain, and Meghan McCain walks in and beats the fuck out of you. That would be great. Is yeah. she down for she it? Is she this, cool? This is how they tortured my dad in Vietnam, and they, they fucking, she gets you in an arm Listen, bar. the only person that could make that happen is you. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think I could. I, I think you're the only guy. I think you got to get Tommy Lauren on the phone. I, <laughs> that might be, that's actually another point. Well, yeah. Who else? What, what else? Are the... Are the fembots how many i don't know i don't know too many of them 
But I mean, Me- Me- Megan is. Here's the thing about Megan. She, I, I do respect how much she is always willing to be, you know, like annoying. <laughs> Did you see the thing with her and uh, Donald Trump Jr.? Yeah, that was heavy. Like him going on the View was heavy. It's like, wow, what? Why? What, that and is, all these idiots are like, fire her. It's like you can't. That's the show. The show the, is drama. The show, well, this is you the only dummies. way it's any good. Is if they're right. bu- you, you want any of their real opinions about stuff? No, I want Rosie screaming? O'Donnell back talking about nine eleven. Well, if you want to get back at Trump, you hire Rosie again. Yes, because Rosie a great and Trump idea. fucking hate each other. They hate each other. They fucking hate each other. He, I mean, he would go on TV and call her a loser. <laughs> yeah, they would just. There was a, <laughs> when I grew up, that was a feud. Yes, like as I was growing up, that was a feud. It was Rosie O'Donnell. And Donald Trump when he he did it on Twitter like right after he won he was talking shit about Rosie well it was the big uh, thing with Megyn Kelly she was like you've called women pigs this that and the other thing and he goes only Rosie O'Donnell <laughs> yes only Rosie O'Donnell and it got a huge <laughs> pop of course a huge pop yeah, look, he's fucking funny. He knows yeah. how to be funny. What is Megyn Kelly going to do? What's her comeback? Well, she wants to do a podcast. Yeah. And they actually contacted me about coming, her coming on here. Interesting. She, she wants to do... I mean, look, she definitely could do a podcast. Her comments about blackface were... were I get that they were tone deaf, but when you watch it in context... It's weird that she lost her job. They were trying to get rid of her. For the way she said it. It's a good question she's like why right. can't you pretend to be someone who For you character. admire like diana ross right it's not a bad question the problem is you can't you can say that on a podcast i just did why can't you right you can't you can't get fired from a podcast right but she what she didn't understand is how they were going to use that to attack her and then she has this fucking apology video it looks like there's isis guys behind her with a fucking sword to her neck <laughs> and it was crazy it was a goddamn hostage video i saw her i'm the, sorry the week she I was did not yeah know. i did not I, the week she was leaving fox i was again i was in there doing red eye i saw her she knew she was kind of doing the wrong thing she was sitting in the makeup chair. She just had this weird energy. You can't go from Fox to then being America's sweetheart on NBC well, in the morning. Well, she did, and she didn't pull it off, but she did make $60 million. It's a lot of money. She could tell everyone to eat her ass. For $60 for the For the end of time. Yeah. You have $60 million. You it's don't have to do point. shit ever point. again for the rest of your life. That's true. Her kids are safe. She's they're safe. Set. They're they, all set. They're up. set. Yeah, I would, I would tell her to do it too. Right, Fox is not going to give her that kind of money. Right, that's fucking money, 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 it's money. Big money, but it's not as much money. Yeah, as Bill O'Reilly paid out gals. Well, yeah. Well, he's How much clearly he paid out. He gals? paid that woman uh, least 30. wheel thirty two million dollars, I believe. Check that, Jamie. Just so I'm not wrong. And this is weird for me because you know my Long Island. Grandfather had the Patriots welcome Bill O'Reilly Matt every Thanksgiving. You would step right on it, and you would sit down. And Bill O'Reilly was Bill O'Reilly's voice was bellowing through the house. Oh yeah, because this was a you know this is my grandparents who I love to death. They love Fox and they love Bill O'Reilly because oh. Bill was a traditionalist. Yeah, for old Bill was white like a, people. Yeah, even with the thirty-two million dollar settlement, Bill O'Reilly made millions last year. Yeah, he's oh, doing yeah. well. Oh well, what do you think you? Well. What do you what, think what he did? Is what is this? Years More than ago. two years old. Yeah. Thirty-two million dollars. You have to be guilty, right? You There's you did and, something and it's dark, bad. You're like a hairbrush up your ass. And yeah, just piss in my mouth. And she's I'm gonna got light your fucking piss she's on got fire. Photos and yeah. videos of him doing crazy shit. Well, he or was threatening leave, her. He, did, wouldn't didn't he get caught leaving like crazy messages on some gal's voicemail? Yeah, he said, "I'm he gonna a, loofah you." Before mm. that one, that was the sixth settlement for thirty-two million. He had five previous that totaled thirteen million. So he's forty-five million in the hole for that six. Separate incidents. You know, he's a traditionalist. He's a traditionalist. He's a traditionalist. Listen, I understand. This is a traditional. It's, listen, it's only half a hundred million. It's fifty million dollars because <laughs> you made a few boo boos. You made a few mistakes at work. All these people don't understand that a man needs to get some things off his chest. Well, I think there's also there was the environment that these guys sort of came up in whether it's Matt Lauer or whether it's Bill O'Reilly these guys who are like they're they're buttoned down on television and then off air they would blow off some steam oh yeah and some of them were more wacky than other ones and uh you know Lauer there was a was didn't that Ronan Farrow guy prove that there was a bunch of other settlements that NBC had denied about Matt Lauer well he just put out a book yeah catch catch and release yeah yeah well, um, the other thing is, like, the, you got to remember, guys like Bill O'Reilly this? and Matt Lauer, they rose through the ranks to the heads of their... I mean, the, it's a certain type of person that gets there. The details you know? were already known. 
What is new information, though, is that her agreement demanded she turn over all evidence which she conversed with O'Reilly and, furthermore, to act like such evidence never existed. Her settlement also required that she lie, even in legal proceedings or under oath, if any evidence becomes public by calling the evidence counterfeit or forgeries. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Bill's got a good attorney. <laughs> yeah, Bill's Bill's attorney's not fucking around. Bill's attorney's got a fucking knife in his teeth like yeah. Rambo. Bill sits down with the ladies and goes, you're going to never work again, but you're also never going to talk again. Yeah, you're going to keep you your mouth you shut. Don't, you don't need to work, baby. You don't need to work, Daddy yeah. Bill's going to take care of everything. $32 I mean, million. Ooh, that's a good sum to have in the $32 million. Let me, let me just check my account real right. quick on my phone. Ooh, look at that. Look at all the zeros. That's crazy. There's a 32, <laughs> and then after that 32, well, holy shit, look at all them fucking yeah. zeros. And he's also like, listen, you're alive. He didn't kill you. Oh, you're making 32 million. Oh, all right, so you were scared to go home for a little bit. 32, my, zero, zero, zero. My favorite thing about Bill O'Reilly, zero, zero, zero. he tried to get the Catholic <laughs> Church to excommunicate his ex-wife. Yes, he's like, I'm not getting divorced. Fuck her. That is the best thing. He tried to send his ex-wife to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that is big. and by the way mother of his kids yes like let's say he got it done in his worldview in the catholic worldview she's going to hell so he would have to sit down with his kids and go now you know your mother's going to hell and so, i made that happen didn't he also um tried to get the marriage annulled so he didn't have to get divorced i think so but i remember that he was like if we can't annul it just doom her to hell <laughs> just excommunicate her and let her let the woman uh, that oh. gave me children just live on the lake of fire forever. Well, here's the real question. A freak like that doesn't just... I mean, he was a freak deep into his 60s. And he's still a freak now. Yes. He's still a freak. People so don't change. what's he change. doing? That's what I I'm saying. I don't know. What's he doing? He's, I think now it's, there's a lot of NDAs, which there should have been back then. Whatever. They need yeah. to break those. How yeah. did he not get caught up in Fuck Island? Oh, because I don't know. He's a traditionalist. He probably likes some dirty over there. He's a Long Island guy. He likes an old woman he can beat. He doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want a young chick on an island. He wants a woman who's terrified, whose life's been horrible. Look at this. Horowitz to this testify on impeachment hearings. Oh, the O'Reilly, BillOReilly.com. Yeah. I think it has massive traffic, too. I think oh, it does really yeah. well. Like, didn't we find this out that his videos have like fucking hundreds of millions of views or something ridiculous yeah, like that? It's on his own site, so it'd be really hard to, to mm. know. But didn't we? Doesn't he have some things on uh, YouTube or something like that? Maybe. I saw him once at a clam bar. This is where I'm yeah. gonna have to go eventually. I'm gonna have to go to JoeRogan.com and just have videos up. Otherwise, <sighs> as things grow, like you're you're still under the umbrella of these companies. I don't say anything so outrageous other than this episode. Where I could yeah. get yanked off the air, I'm blaming you. But it's worth but, it. Oh, yeah, I guarantee there's going to be a problem later, and I'm going to text Jamie and be like, why are you guys <laughs> not on YouTube? He's going, because your dumb video yeah, that you, no one watched. You fucking lied through about the biggest show. sell Matchwell or whatever the fucking yeah. name is. I think, um, but the problem is, YouTube comes with its own built-in audience, right? There's a yeah. bunch of people that are already subscribing on YouTube. I mean, we have millions of subscribers. What will we tell those people? Hey, just kind of, I know you come over, come over here. Come over here. Come I think they'll here. all go. Nah, I don't know about that. I just don't know what the future for, because there's guys that are like David Dobrik, huge YouTubers that are making all this money, and then a, a lot of them have talked about their ad revenue has been cut substantially. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of them. So a lot of them are people. starting podcasts. Like Logan yes. Paul started a podcast. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys are going, oh, the ad money is going to move into podcasting. Well, podcasting is a little cleaner in that if you have an audience, it's just an RSS feed, and it gets aggregated through iTunes and through the Android apps and all these different apps. Do you think right now, supposedly, and I don't know, you would know more about this than me, that there's something that is transcribing podcasts? There's a, there's a way that they're going to transcribe podcasts uh, that are going forward and, and, and you know ones that have already happened, and is that potentially a way to... You know, do you think anyone's going to eventually have to have a license, a podcasting license? Like, do you Ooh. think this will not be the Wild West anymore? And is it, are they going to come in and try to regulate this to any degree, would you think? I think the cat's out of the bag. I think the yeah. box is open. You know, I just don't think you can at this point in time. But I think the clamps, the way you put the clamps down is demonetization. They've done that. You know, they've done that with a lot of people. They've demonetized them off of YouTube. They've um, cut out their Patreon. They've cut out PayPal. They've done all these different things to keep them from being able to make money. Which is a they comic. Even if I disagree with somebody, even if I think what they're saying is abhorrent, mm -hmm. as long as they're not harassing or threatening or right. doxing people, I've, I'm never somebody who says, 
they shouldn't be allowed to have a, a platform. I agree. And uh, the, also the problem is what you're doing by demonetizing someone that's saying something that's very popular. Like say if you have a channel and your channel has uh, you know, half a million subscribers and you're, you're not doing anything particularly egregious. You're not calling for the death of people. You're not right. openly, And even if you overtly, are, it's goofy. Right. You're not overtly racist. But if they demonetize you, what it also does, it sends a signal to people that are also like that, that maybe haven't stepped out that far yet to like, oh, rein it back a little bit. Right. So you self-censor. You pull it's it like back. It's like there was a quote. It's like, kill one man, scare a thousand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, that, that is what you do. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the why, why, do you thought, why do you think they put Wesley Snipes in jail for tax evasion? Just to prove to, to everyone else. Let everybody else. know. Hey, you fuck. You're going to jail. Yeah. Lauren Hill, same thing. Go to jail. You're going to jail, jail. Right. Like regular jail. Like regular yeah. people jail. It doesn't matter if you feel like paying the money back. Oh, I yeah. didn't know. My accountant lied to doesn't me. Doesn't care. Get the fuck in the jail. They're sending a message. Yeah, they're sending a message. So do you think, I think after December 12th, YouTube's going to be able to, if your channel's not commercially viable, they'll be able to just get rid of it if they want. That is a, that's a way for them to stop something in its tracks. Okay. That's what I think. So say if some new guy comes along, like yeah. you, and yeah. you come along spitting fire and talking shit and everybody's getting fired up and oh my God, look what he said about Megan McCain. And Megan, Megan McCain calls up YouTube, you listen... We're going to take the view and we're going to pull it off of YouTube if yeah. you don't get rid of that fucking fat fuck that's yeah. impersonating me. That is this, I shit. sometimes I wonder if, hey. if like the shadow banning and stuff is because I just made Gary Vaynerchuk mad. And I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I made a joke about him. Do you think he's powerful enough to just go to all no. these companies and be like, maybe. I don't know. Right. I, don't th I don't think he would do that. I'm but kidding, Gary. How, I love Gary. I love you. No. I, I'm inspired by you every day. It's all a bit. It's a bit. It's all a joke. I think it's great when you. What happened with him? Well, I, I'll make. I, you know, I have a joke about him. I really, you know, I have a joke. I made a little video about him because some of the things he tweets, he tweets like kindness is delicious. Come on, what are we doing? He puts out a little too much content. Yeah, but That's it's also like say. all my loser friends think they're going to be the CEOs of companies because this guy <laughs> is telling them there's a business inside of everyone, and there's not. There's just not a business inside of everybody. There's a lot of people that just shouldn't, be, like you know, yeah. that should just fall in line. <laughs> Fall in line. We don't need uh, everyone thinking that they're going to be the next CEO. Right, but he's got to send the message out there as if everyone can be. That way, the people that are listening and get it, the people that get it, like they're like, okay, he's saying everyone can. That means me. I'm going to go for it, and then they make it. And I appreciate and him doing that, but I need to send the message that most people can't. A lot of people can't. So in the same way that he has a message, I have a message, and my message is, you're not, it's not going to happen. And he mm. has the, but it's also, there's no specific guidance with a lot of these guys, not only him, but he'll say things like, you could talk about it or you could do it, but you better do both. And it's like, well, what's the it? Like he tweeted once, he goes, ideas are shit. It's all about execution. It's like, execute what? What are we going to do? <laughs> I need help. My kids are sick. Execute what? <laughs> Can you text me? Do I meet you somewhere? How do we start this? How do we build these businesses? Are we going to do it together? Why do you think he got mad? He got mad? I'm kidding. I don't know if he's mad or not. I wonder if a guy like that has a sense of humor. I'm a comedian. Did something you get pulled that you did? My my The Gary Vee thing, they took it off YouTube. No. I mean, they took it off Instagram, IG. <sighs> No. And I bet he walked into a room with a bunch of guys in little hoodies, and he was like, get this fatty. And they did. And no. I'm not mad at that, because I respect power. <laughs> <laughs> I respect power, Gary. I get it. I'm just saying, ah! I'm a funny guy. Me and you will do a podcast, Gary. It's fine. Mm. He's a small... I respect him. I respect him. He's a smart guy, right? He's smart. He's... I just... I wonder how many successful people need that. Like, does Warren Buffett, like, look at his phone and go, it's time to hustle? How I don't did know. he get a parody of you removed from Instagram? Probably didn't. I'm just a conspiracy guy. Is it on guy. YouTube still? Yeah. Let's play it. Where is it? It's probably <laughs> on YouTube. I want to I hear what you said, and I want to see what was the trigger. Well, there was... I, I also <laughs> waved the knife around. There's, there's stuff that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> I that talked about assassinating the president. <laughs> it wasn't, but th my whole point was that when you make these, when you give people very general and vague. I need to see this now. I need to smoke this joint. General and vague <clears throat> advice. What sometimes happens is that, you know, you know, people can, like David Hogg tweeted the other day. He goes, it's the hardest days in our lives that makes us who we are. So then I subtweeted it and I wrote, okay, so no gun control, right? <laughs> 
I mean, <coughs> and my point there is not to say anything shitty about Hog, but to say, listen, if you're just going to tweet vague, meaningless horse shit all day, like, that's all that kid does. David Hogg will wake up and he goes, racism is bad. And it gets 42,000 likes. It's like, cut this <laughs> shit out. Well, isn't he like 17? He's a child. We got to stop listening to children. Yeah, well, that was Louis' joke. Yes. About Parkland survivors. He's back. I'm filled he's back. He's killing it. I'm fucking. It just, my friend saw a show the other night. He's like, it's the best hour. It's amazing. I heard he murdered it. A guy He's did a amazing. review of him. A guy did a review of him. He said, I have a very complicated relationship with Louis C.K. I think what he did was horrible. I was a fan of his. I was greatly disappointed. But then I saw his new set and it was fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No one even knows what he did. He's like, I think what he did was horrible. It's like, describe what he did. The guy's like, ah, well, I, you know. Did you see that girl that... Well, hold on a second. Oh, here. I found it. You found it. Okay, play this. It's on his Twitter, by the way. Oh, it's on Twitter. Twitter. Sorry. Hey, but by the way, stop. Pause yeah. it for a second. Shout out to Twitter. Thank Shout out to Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. They let it fly. Twitter let Meghan McCain fly. They let it all fly. Twitter lets everything fly. They, you can take it in the ass on Twitter. They have porn. It's an adult on Twitter. site. This yes. is for adults. I just love that they do that. They kept the Meghan McCain thing up, whereas YouTube uh, or Instagram took it down, right? Instagram... You they, had two yeah. things taken down. Well, Megan You're was I, I, two I, strikes, buddy. That's why I'm not. I barely mm -hmm. put the videos on Twitter on on Instagram anymore because I don't want to lose my account. Good call. Let's hear. Let's hear this. I learned the most important word ever. Stop Thank crying you. and just keep hustling, guys. We're building businesses here. Where do I meet you, man? <laughs> fucking do it. And so you can say it or you can do it, but I highly recommend you do both. I'll I'll do it. <laughs> I'll say it and I'll do it. I used to work in a liquor store for seven straight years and the only days off I took were to watch the New York Jets. And you know what that did? It made me throw up on myself. So that wasn't a vacation. <laughs> My son is sick. Nobody gives a fuck about your problems. Fuck yeah! Hustle is the most important word ever. What about the word jug? <laughs> Recognize that you can attack the world in a totally different way. Oh! <laughs> I should kill the president! <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> oh, this is the issue. I don't think Gary Vee got it together. It's Come funny. On, it's stupid. Man. We're being stupid. Yeah. We made this Come at like on. 3 a.m. Come on. It's fucking hilarious. Gary, You're you know, a it's a comedian. We just got to have a little fun. Gary, we love you. We love you, Gary. Congratulations on all your success. Open invite on my show anytime you want to come. He's been on mine. I, I yeah, enjoy the guy's I'm sure he's more hyped about going on yours he than sent, mine. He sent me a pair of his sneakers, but they were too small. I what somebody size you wear? A, um, thirteen a fan you? twelve a fan of his sent me a pair of his sneakers and actually they're K Swiss sneakers that he's yeah, put yeah, his yeah. name on but they are nice and comfortable mm. yeah he sent me like ten and a half so my feet are all fucked up in them yeah did you see that are you guys talking about Megan McKelly <clears throat> she has a YouTube channel now I don't know if you know that <laughs> oh. Megan McKelly Megan McKelly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Same McKelly thing. it's just a hybrid. Um, her first video she, like she launched selling makeup. was talking to the CBS, the girl that was fired from CBS right. for putting out that ABC clip, and she right. said right. she was falsely fired. Yeah, she said she didn't even do it, yeah. and then the the guy Project Veritas guy said it wasn't her either. Right. Yeah. So somebody, so she got fired for nothing. Right. It's, but did she? Was she the one who captured it though? She did, but in her defense, she said that was her job. Her job was to capture things. Right, mark them in internally for, for in case anybody wanted to use it. For yeah, anything she got in the thrown future. to the wolves. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also for she said for like blooper reels. Could, yeah, could have been for anything. There's yeah. lots of things they mark. They stuff do that for. when you do a sitcom. You know, they do the blooper reel where every time you fuck up your line, like they, we still love those for news radio. We yeah. should play them at the end of the the season at the rap party. We play the blooper reel. That's probably what they were doing. Yeah. The thing is about those new shows. There's no season. It just right. keeps going, baby. It just keeps going and going. And I, I was listening to your, the, the thing you did with Matt and the Taibi, and he was like, yeah, they just want access to people. They just yeah. want to interview like Will and Kate. They're like, we're not yep. going to get too sticky in this. No. You know? Yeah, they want access. And that's what they don't want to throw away. By yeah. Some crazy and they depend week. on people in the government to get access. And if you're a pariah and you're on the outside, you don't get the White House, you know, but press this, pass. See, you know? the thing about this Epstein thing is it's like such an open door 
into conspiracies. Oh, it's, it's an open door into a lot of powerful people having to account for themselves, and that's not in their plan. I think that's part of what's happening to YouTube, where they're like, we don't like the idea that somebody like Alex Jones can start a channel and have more views than the nightly news. We That means we're losing power and we're losing control. Uh -huh. And I think that somewhere, whether it was in Davos or whatever, Bilderberg Conference, there was a, a room full of people that were like, we got to we they gotta rein technology in a little bit. You don't think that there's some thought to that? that well, these, there certainly is. There that, certainly yeah, is. Yeah. These there guys are uncomfortable. Be. Well, they're, they're, I mean, especially people that have already done things that are illegal, that right. are immoral, of unethical, course. and there's like there's some sort of evidence of them. Right. But this guy was like the cream of the crop, right? But what he was was like the... If you're a conspiracy theorist looking for something really crazy, this is a best case scenario because it has everything. It has powerful people. It has underage girls. It has all the equations. It has illegal sexual activity with underage girls on an island that he flies you to. That with it has a, temple. a fucking temple. It's that's crazy. Painted yeah. the color of the Israeli flag. Yeah, there's but, a lot of. But also. It's unfolding in real time. Yeah, but it's also, it's you like know? it's an island that people called Fuck Island? Really? Yeah, pe pe this pedophile is, island, kid fuck island, whatever it is. This is yeah. like a James Bond movie. It's absolutely, it's like a weird Tom Clancy novel about, but this this guy clearly was allowed to get away with this. The first deal he got was a very a sweetheart deal. We all, you know, he, yeah. he, he was allowed to go home during the day. This was a guy that was, you know, convicted... Of, you know, having what, sex, molesting a 14 year old. What they convicted him of, I think, had to do with a massage parlor. Well, something, it was a 14 year old mm. girl, and then he was allowed one of the things, the provisions, was to not name any co conspirators. So wow. that first deal was like he was not going to have to. Now, this, that wasn't going to work like that this time. They were going to be like, you're now going to sin. <sighs> and nobody was letting that happen. What do you think they're doing with the guards? Do you think they're like putting pressure on the guards and go, hey, you it's gotta, hard for me. You got to fill us in the blanks. Yeah. They're going to probably, the, but one of the guards said no to a plea bargain, which I thought was very interesting. That's very interesting too. I don't know. It doesn't seem, I would have to have faith that, I think there's elements in the FBI and there's probably elements in the government that want to get to the bottom of this, but they're going up against a wall of people that don't want to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. We're talking billionaires. We're talking about people that run countries. We're talking about ex-presidents. We're talking about you know, potentially intelligence agencies, and they're going to just hit that wall. Yeah. I like the old ones better with no consequences, like the Kennedy assassination. Well, because it was all over. Yeah, it's done. It's all over. It's, it's just done. where this is we're playing looking out right back. now. It's, it's, it's unfolding in real time. And it's crazy. I remember when I woke up and he was killed, so many people had messaged me. They were like, this is kind of what you, you know, said was going to happen, and it, and, it, and it fucking happened. Like, this is the craziest thing ever. Prison's chief says FBI looking at possible criminal enterprise in Epstein's death. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we. <laughs> wow. What does that? What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? These guys are very good at what they do. If this was Mossad, or if it was CIA, if it was like an intel, or if even if it was billionaires that contracted this out to, I mean, these people are very good at what they do. Did you ever read the book The Strange Death of Vince Foster? Do no. You know, do you know about that book? No. Vince Foster was a guy. Well, I know who, that I know that he shot himself what in the head twice or something. No, no, <clears throat> something before he was about to testify in Whitewater. Yeah, he was about to testify. He shot himself. Um, the gun was still in his hand. There was less body at the scene of the crime than was missing from his body. They think his body was potentially moved. These are all the conspiracies that I read. I don't know how much of his actual factual, but it was one of the first ones that I remember reading. Well, there was what? one about was very interesting, and that's very interesting. But there was this. <laughs> After Oklahoma City, there was a cop named Terrence Yeeke, and he started to investigate what had happened because he just wasn't, he didn't think it was just one guy. He didn't think it was just McVeigh. And and yeah. this guy, Terrence Yeeke, ended up like, again, shooting himself in the head and then crawling a mile and climbing a fence because he wanted to die somewhere more private. That was like the official story. So Michael Hastings, journalist in LA, ended up going, you know, right by a really good restaurant, Austria Moza said to his wife and kids, hey, uh, to his wife, he was like, listen, I I've gone off the grid. I'm working on a big story. I think people are fucking around with my car. A, a day later or two days later, his car accelerates into a tree right in the middle of Hollywood. So th things are happening. You know, not just that. Yeah. <clears throat> the engine. It um, flew out. It flew out of the uh, car, which is never supposed to happen. It's indication of some sort of an explosion the conspiracy is. Yeah. Dun, so, dun, dun. And if any of that, think of any of those stories, if any of them had happened in Russia, if any of them had happened in another country, 
what would all of the journalists in America be saying? You know the Hastings origin story? Do you know what happened? I don't know the origin story. <laughs> it's the story. He went to the um, Middle East, and he was embedded. And he was only supposed to be there for a short period of time, but then the volcano happened. Okay. Remember that volcano yeah. that blew, and they couldn't fly? Right, so then he stayed, so with he, the stayed journal, right, with, uh, he stayed with the McChrystal? Yeah. Um, or or Petraeus. I think McChrystal, Stanley think McChrystal, yeah. McChrystal. And he heard them say a lot of shit that he wasn't supposed to hear. They joked around about a lot of things, and he put that in the story. They got comfortable with him. They, they thought he wouldn't fuck them, and he fucked them. They, they treated him the same way they treat everybody. They tell jokes. They right. joked around about Obama. Right. <clears throat> and you know, he wrote The Runaway General. Hey, man, yeah. they're fucking blowing off steam in a goddamn war zone. The run, Runaway General, the profile that brought down McChrystal. So this is, he's the guy that wrote it. And McChrystal, my, Michael Hastings, McChrystal was, like, beloved. Yeah. Beloved by the troops, and he had to step down. So when he had to step down, that's when people were saying, "Oh, well, that's probably why they killed him." Yeah, it's probably very possible. I that. mean, you make those kind of enemies, like we talked about Kennedy. <coughs> it's like you make. Yeah. That's the thing with conspiracy theorists; they think everything's just five guys in a room. It's not. Yeah, There's a not. lot of powerful people with a lot of money and resources that can make your life very hard. Yeah. They can tar you in the press. They can slander you. And that guy clearly, or they can get rid of you. I mean, Hastings clearly fucked that guy over. He fucked that guy over? I mean, he well, said, I'm just going to go for it. This is what I do Hastings as a journalist. Hastings probably was like, listen, this is what I do as a journalist. There's yeah. people dying. This is a war, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do what I feel I have to do. But it's also like those people are over there in the most duress-filled situations on earth. Yes. And I think it's so weird that we look at that from times of peace or from the uh, a land of peace, the environment of peace. Yeah. And even comprehend like just I jokes agree. they just said jokes of course yeah 100 percent. i mean what did he i don't remember what he said that was so awful i forget what he said but i knew it was it made obama because obama is still the commander-in-chief so the idea that you have a high end uh, you know a, a very big general openly mocking the commander-in-chief in rolling stone magazine is probably not a good look and right. and, and then you got it just because of you know the way that things work he's got to go google it jamie yeah. google what did mccrystal say about obama that got him fired Trump just pardoned somebody, and I forget. He was a controversial military guy. He was a SEAL that right. was accused of taking a photograph with a, a dead body. That was it? He was, okay. um, he, what, what Trump did, he didn't pardon him. He gave him his rank back. Okay. So he was his rank was stripped, and that would have cost him a lot of money and benefits. Yeah. And uh, Trump reinstated his, uh, his military status. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very... <coughs> so I know there was a lot of opinions. Very public story. It was a very, very, um, very controversial story. Uh, the I the get, whole thing was. I get that things happen in wartime that we, you know, sitting here in a cushy environment in Los Angeles, like, couldn't possibly understand. But I, I do think, you know, you, you, you can't just let the chaos of it become its own law. Right. Because then it kind of defeats the purpose of whatever the hell we're trying to do. Yeah, for sure. There, yeah, know? for sure. For sure. He says Obama angry after reading McChrystal's remarks. <coughs> was yeah, well, what I wonder what they were. Are? Yeah, I'm sure it does. I found a couple in the actual article. It said like he looked uh, intimidated in front of brass or something like that. That Obama did? Yeah. Oh, that's like what they were the saying. First thing that it was said. Yeah, this is what uh, you said. It was like it was. And intimidated. This is what you would talk about with your friends yeah. if you had a couple of drinks. McChrystal thought Obama looked uncomfortable, and intimidated by a room full of military brass. Their first one-on-one -on -one meeting took place at the Oval Office four months later. After McChrystal got the Afghanistan job, didn't do much better. It was a 10-minute photo op, says an advisor to McChrystal. Obama clearly didn't know anything about him, who he was. Here's the guy who's going to run this his fucking war, but he didn't seem very engaged. The boss was pretty disappointed. Now, let me um, let me defend this for a second. If I was Obama, um, I would be intimidated as fuck. Of course, you're, you're going. To, you just became president, and you're going in around these generals who are yeah. like the 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 baddest military motherfuckers on earth in the middle of a real war where they have to kill of bad course. guys. Yeah. And this is what you're relying on to kill these bad guys who could be very, very dangerous. And Obama had no experience with that. <laughs> it does, you're going to be intimidated. Of course. Now, here's the other thing. He was like, he wasn't engaged. He didn't know. This has always been my take on it. There's no, I mean, about being a president, there's no fucking way you could be on top of everything. Can't. There's no way. We, I don't think we even comprehend all the different things you have to be paying attention to if you're going to be the fucking president. 
but whether it's social issues, economic issues, climate issues, military, taxes, de- right. d- decline of the stock market, this and that, and then you're in Twitter wars with people at the yeah. same time, and then there's foreign policy, and delegate. what about North Korea? Yeah. Holy shit, there's so many things. It's impossible. And he probably didn't know how to assert himself and he probably even though it didn't work out so well i mean what the fuck do you tell a guy like mccrystal who's running this war if you're obama do you fire him probably doesn't no interesting so you don't get rid of him no really no but you're the president he's right the guy's right right i know he's fucking intimidated i know you you bring the guy in you give him respect you have a conversation with him and you say, look, I'm not a perfect person, you know? I, right. If I handle that incorrectly, I'm just learning how to be the fucking president of the United States. It's a crazy gig. I mean, he's only in his 40s, right? right. right. I mean, as, as amazing as he is, as intelligent as he is, as, as well-read and articulate as he is, he's still fucking kind of young to be running the greatest army the world's of ever course. known. Everybody yeah. is, nobody's qualified nobody's for that Nobody's qualified, job. yeah. It's too crazy. It's crazy. I, I would have brought the guy in. I would have yeah. brought him in. Let's have a fucking drink. Let's I'm have so, a meeting. Let's sorry. have a summit. Yeah, look, I, if I've disrespected you, if you felt bad, I'm and sorry. And then you kill Michael Hastings yeah. together. Together. Uh, Joe Obama brings McChrystal in and go, let's kill him if, together. If that's it, if that's it, Jesus Christ, imagine that getting you whacked. Well, that I mean, less than that will get you whacked. I know, but that seems to me like men could have worked that out. They should have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I seem like it. I mean, I, I'm never going to be the fucking president. I have no desire to be a mayor of anything. Are you going to moderate Not, a debate? Because never. That's online, no, people want it, Joe. I'm just tired. Joe, people I'm moving want away it. from all this stuff. Don't Move, you? You're not I'm leaving away LA. From more. I'm moving away from more. But. <laughs> One thing I would try to do in a situation like that is set an example of how I want my neighbors to act. I don't want my neighbors to fucking cancel each other if one guy says the other guy looked intimidated about something to his wife and you hear about it. Part of that is because you're, you're a fighter and you came up with that conflict resolution and then you have, you know, isn't that, do you think part of that's martial arts, the way you look at situations or no? I mean, maybe, but it's also a sense of camaraderie. I think okay. people can work out a lot more problems than they think they can. That's probably true. I think, it'll, and it's a better, it's a better plan for everybody. Most people will fucking engage you angry if you engage them angry but most people if you go kind of come on man i'm not looking for any trouble and they know you're sincere you're like this i i this is how i felt maybe you felt different maybe this maybe this is how you felt but let me tell you how i meant what i meant what i said and i fucked up the way i said it or i did this or maybe i should have been more sensitive Let's work it out. Yeah. Let's work it's it out as people. It's becoming harder to do that with technology. But when you got the president who fires the fucking number one general, he's like, you know, you said something about me being intimidated. Get the fuck out of the fucking... Right. You can't, You man. can't, yeah. What else did he say? Did he say something else? Oh, in person, in private, team of Crystal likes to talk shit about many of Obama's top people on the diplomatic side. 180 calls Jim Jones, a retired four-star general, veteran of the Cold War, a clown who uh, remained stuck in 1985. But listen, this is what guys do. Here's the thing. You're asking this guy, you're asking this guy to be a fucking assassin for freedom, right? Right, That's what what he's doing. Right, right. He's out there murking bad guys in in other parts of the world. You send him over there, and then you want him to follow the same human resource codes that a guy who was the fucking uh, manager at- J.P. Morgan or something does. Or not even, like fucking- Geico. Anything, yeah, right. guy, yeah, guy. yeah, perfect right. example. You're, you're asking, the, of course, the guy's on edge, right? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> missiles he's, are flying yeah, over he's a his head. a professional killer. His friends are getting killed, right? Yeah, he's got to make the decisions that will send thousands of men potentially to their death. Of course, yeah. Of course, he's on edge. Yeah. He calls someone a clown. It's amazing. That's all he does. Right. That's it's true. It's amazing he doesn't find the people he hates and cuts their fucking heads off. Yeah. Okay, that's what he's doing. You're, you're, you're turning him into a warrior, right? Yeah. He's a warrior. He's a professional soldier. You're sending him to these insane places of conflict, and you're upset if he calls somebody a clown? Yeah, that's stupid. It's insane. Yeah. Men should be able to work things like that out. I know, but this is, you know, they don't. They should be able to work things out. People hold grudges for a long time, and then that those grudges become, you know, policy. And That's so ridiculous. It's to crazy. Be a ma- to be a man, you have to be a clown. Every now and then, you fuck up. Absolutely. That's just part of being a man. And there's that, this illusion of the invulnerable person the person that never makes mistakes and do you think obama perfect. thought to himself if 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 i don't do this i will look weak sure sure yeah i don't sure. know i'm just I trying know. i don't I mean, know i don't know i could never imagine 
never imagined that gig. That gig, that gig is fucking impossible it's for very, any yeah, human. It's a very any good human. chance I will not be the president. Uh, I mean, look at Obama. I mean, like a, a, a fucking Harvard graduate, brilliant guy, lawyer, super articulate, as polished yeah. as they ever get. Smart. Even he can't do it right. Nobody no, can do nobody it. Nobody can do it right. It's nobody not designed do to be done right. You can't do it, man. Yeah. You well, can't do the, it if you're Trump. You can't the, do it if you're Obama. It's the end stage of the empire. It's like we've had, you know, it's yeah. basically we're just trying to land the plane or we're trying to sustain. Well, but no, everyone knows. There's too much kind of come. There's too many things coming that are, are no president and no political solution will help. Right. And that's AI and automation. Yeah, for That's sure. Why Andrew, I love Andrew Yang, but I don't know what like his rallies. He's on a skateboard all the time. <laughs> he's like, we have a lot of fun at our rallies. It's like, but the whole point of your campaign is like in five years, forty percent of us are going to be fighting for water. Yeah, and then he's like skateboarding around his rallies. Well, he's just he's got to dance that dance of making people like him. Yeah, and that's the thing about but running those, for president. He's are, a very very nice guy, and Andrew he's a Yang. smart guy, and he very gets smart what's guy. happening. He scared me. Yeah. When he started talking about uh, the automation taking over jobs and yeah. about universal basic income, people are going to need it to stay alive and survive. I'm like, whoa. Like, me, maybe this guy's like the fucking, you know, the beginning of the Terminator where someone's warning you. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll kill him. He'll. <laughs> Andrew Yang's you know going I mean? into a tree next week if but, um, he keeps this up. He, he won't be because no one's in charge of the machine. Right. That's, that's what's nuts. With the, and, this machine yeah. of AI, no one really, once it goes, once it's it just goes, goes live. I'm so scared of it. I really think that we are... We're the we, last human era. We're the last... Hu do you think we're at the end of the human era? Well, this and, is, this is yeah. the path that I see. This is what freaks yeah. me out. I see technology, right? Technology is innovating on this accelerated pace, super accelerated. And it started out very rudimentary. It started out when we were really complicated. So right. we were really complicated, and it was like flint tools. Right. And then it went from flint tools to a bow and arrow with a flint on the end of it, to a fucking canoe, to a house, to a this, to a that, to yes. electricity and solar panels. And it just kept getting better and better and better and better at an insane accelerated rate. But we look like the same people that made the fucking arrowhead. Right, right. We're not, we didn't evolve We're that not evolving. We, we may be devolving. We, we're well, going the other way. I'm sure we're evolving in terms of intelligence. We certainly have more access to intelligence or to information yeah. than anybody's ever had ever. And it's hard to tell exactly what gets passed down from parent to child. But I think it's pretty likely that some data gets passed down and not just from interacting with the parents while you're growing up. I think shit, you, I think you get some that maybe you don't know what it is. Right. Maybe you don't recognize it, right. but there's some memories in your head there's or some basic a, yeah. understanding of what's bad and good. Absolutely. And I think that's why some people are afraid of spiders because it's some shit that's in their DNA. They like, know. They yeah. know. Like it, they have a particular fear of something right. because somewhere in their memory, someone's DNA had, I got bit by a spider. Right. right. Interesting. So it was like an yeah. imprint. Yeah. And I think we are just slow as fuck, like every other thing on this planet. When you see an eagle a thousand years ago, it looks like a fucking eagle. It's going to look like a fucking eagle a thousand years from now. Right. They got the design down. That's it. It swoops in, it gets the salmon. There's it's no all upgrade. it needs to do. It's right. great. It's got it's it down. But we, we're not, we can't keep up with this fucking thing we made. So why don't so we, this thing we made is going to take over. Why don't we slow it down? Why don't we legislate it and say, let's just not, why do we have to be victims of this? We can stop it. We can shut it down, right? It's a good question. I mean, this I just is, don't think anybody would ever do it because I think everybody is profiting. I mean, there's so many countries that are profiting off it, so many businesses that are profiting off it, so many people like you and me that use yeah. it it's all the time. The conveniences. I mean, as nice comedians now, our, our, a lot of our lives and careers are at the mercy of algorithms. A hundred percent. The algorithm now is the it's the gatekeepers are done they're done it's right. the algorithm yes. they're deciding who sees your stuff and and who can see it and who becomes a fan and who doesn't yes so that's ai already running our careers and lives well that's programmed i mean what what that is is like computer learning and it's their algorithm is essentially just set up to figure out how to make the most money possible right and it turns out that's keep us arguing with each other you right make the most money possible it's really kind of fucked up yeah imagine if it got like <laughs> if it got like <laughs> extra money for us beating the fuck out of each other like what if someone made like a twitter or a tinder right for just people to meet and beat the fuck out of each other legally yeah like what if like people that'll happen oh well, I it's mean, coming why not right now maybe i just invented it there you but go. you have a tinder where people could just meet up somewhere just have and fights. just beat each other's yeah. asses and it turns out that's more profitable because more people want to watch you beat the fuck out of each other than even turning you on to uh the new abortion article on facebook right or something about climate you change engage. yeah because you really 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 engage and people are beating the fuck out of each other what is it that makes when people are fighting why is it that p these guys are making more money is it because we're just on more 
We're online more because we're fighting. Yes. So I'm going to get the Starbucks gift card yes. because I'm fighting with my yes. aunt who thinks she's QAnon or whatever. Well, also because they, also because they know what you've been Googling. Say, say maybe you've been uh, Googling a Rolex. Right. Like a specific Rolex. You like, really got my eye on it. Right. And then it starts showing you those ads okay. in your feed. Did right. you know that? Like if you Google something. I, I will Google something and I'll yes. Google a hotel because I'm like, I wonder, I wonder how much it costs for that hotel. I'm going to this town. And then they will give me on my Facebook you know, news feed ads yep. for the hotel. Oh, yeah. So as long as you're on, so negativity will just keep you on those sites. Yes. If you're, if here's the thing, most of my recommendations are all muscle cars and martial arts stuff right. and, and hunting stuff. Like that's, right. those are the things that I watch. So that's most of the recommendations that I get. But um, Ari did a trick where the he- The puppies. Yeah, the puppies thing. And it really worked. But if you're a person that's just mad all the time, is looking for fucking conspiracies, looking to get pissed and off at the Facebook world- And my Facebook is all negative. Like, Facebook doesn't have anything positive now. Every status is like, I just had a knee operation. Mm. There's dead dogs everywhere. It's littered with dead pets. Mm. Uh, everybody's like, oh. I, you know, can you help? Here's a GoFundMe. My neighbor's house burned down. Like everything is just human tragedy yeah. and finding. There's money in that, right? Yeah. Is that what it is? Nobody on Facebook's like, by the way, I had a great day and I just love my family. Everybody's <laughs> like, I, I need help right now or I'm going to die. What, when did Facebook? It turned. It was college kids trying to have a bit about it. Where it's like these were college kids just trying to fuck. Yeah. And now it is the complete opposite where it's just elderly people screaming at each other. Well, it's, it's become gone. more of an old person's thing, too, it's, right? It's a boomer thing, and mm. my aunt loves it. She's on Facebook all the time talking about She thinks she's talking to Trump on Facebook. That's hilarious. Directly. Well, she has a few glasses of wine, a <laughs> Percocet, and she goes in. <laughs> Woo! And you know, you know somebody's good when they, they get on Facebook and they go, I just got out of Facebook jail. That's my favorite. Oh, when they get yeah, banned when they a little get, bit? when they come back, <laughs> that's when you know you got a live one. They go, I just got out of Facebook jail, so they go, I'm going to take Ugh. it slow, but and then they start within a few statuses, they start getting back into like, hey, here's Nancy Pelosi's address, that's hilarious. and Michelle Obama's a man or whatever. <laughs> that's I, a big one. That's a big one now. Huge. That's a big. I, I don't I know this. This is a giant conspiracy that theory. That Michelle Obama's Eddie a man. Bravo was on this. Uh, in the, he was an early adopter. I had somebody who's kind of intelligent and that I respect tried to tell me. He was like, "It's true." Oh, dude, there's a lot of people that that believe this. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's kind of wild, though. They I think mean, either she's a hermaphrodite. Or is it, um, she's a transvestite. Is it just based on the way that her pants like bunch up? No, Isn't, it's nonsense. Oh, of course, it's the nonsense. Image, yeah, the image is based on her pants bunching up, one hundred percent. But somebody like pretended. Oh, <laughs> Jones claims he has proof. I mean, listen, he wasn't wrong about Epstein. Oh, hey. He's right about a lot of shit. He's right about a lot of stuff. I don't think that's true. I don't think he's that's Maybe true. That but was that's back just when part Alex of his drinking. When he's having happen? fun. August 2017. Alex yeah. has been. That was his oh, yeah, late yeah, yeah, summer yeah. He episode. Was, he was getting torched then. Alex told me he is 90 days clean. 90 days. 90 I want to go on InfoWars in December. Amazing. My goal, I, I really want to go on InfoWars in December and wear Santa hats with him and sing like Happy Holidays. This is Don't what I can do it. I really want to do that. Just uh, schedule something at Cap City. I, I would, yeah, I would love to do it and I, I want to go on there. But during the holidays, we could have Santa hats on and it would be nice and festive. I did a show last time I was there. Yeah. I love Cap City. It's Cap a great City's club. Like one of the greatest well, clubs Austin's of all time. Well, Austin's a great town for comedy. It's they, a great I, town. They like to laugh at themselves. Well, they're very unusual. Yes. In that they're Texas, but they're also like a little San Francisco. Right. You know, it's like San Francisco fuck Texas. Absolutely. Or f no, Texas would fuck San Francisco. Te Texas is fucking San Francisco. Texas is doing the fuck. But San Francisco would only come if there's weird shit involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you gotta- You'd have to- They'd have to bleed or something. Yeah. You gotta but, hold them down. Austin's fun because they laugh at themselves. It's that weird collision of we are certainly Texas. You're in it's the yeah. capital of Texas. Yeah. But you have a lot of progressive people. So that fusion, I think anytime you have a like Boston's a great comedy town or DC, it's because there's a natural tension that you can kind of just touch on those tension points as a comedian. Because Boston has like a lot of working class people, a lot of uh, Ivy League people. There's a lot of race issues. DC is the whole political divide. So I think if you touch on those tension points, and Austin certainly has them. Yeah, they, it's it's got everything. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a weird mixture of like cowboys and hippies and really, yeah. really liberal folks. Barbecue restaurants where you yeah. gotta wait nine hours to get in. Psychedelic culture. Yeah, a lot of artists. It's a very interesting look. Like, I'll point at a restaurant, and I'll be like, is that a homeless shelter? They'll be like, no, it's the highest rated restaurant in the state. You know? It's an odd place. Things that don't hang themselves. Senator Kennedy drops Epstein joke, demands answers at hearing. It's a hearing today, and the Whoa. Senator Kennedy said 
He cracked an Epstein Is this joke? one of the oh, Kennedys? Cool. I guess, right? It's too long. Let um, me find the shorter one. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, we don't need to hear it. Right. I like that they're having fun with it. I don't it. know who he is. He's trolling. He's, he's trying to get trolling. He's getting his name out there. He's having fun. I like that they're having fun with the idea that a, a cabal of pedophiles run the government. They're just having fun. Dude. You freak me out. I mean, let's, listen, maybe that's not the case. I don't know. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of nah, it and everything will be case. okay. <laughs> It's probably the case, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sure everything will be okay. It's just what a, it's what a sick fucking reality. It's a sick reality, like and whatever it's, whatever we do know of it for sure is a problem. Is a real problem. It's a real big problem, yeah. and I think that there's a lot of people that are just like I said when we talked last time. I said it's not in your daily life. You don't think about this shit. Right. You don't think about those crazy sites on the dark web that are getting three or four hundred thousand hits mm -hmm. where it's like, who the fuck are those people? Right. Who are those people signing onto the dark web to watch all this fucked up shit? Somebody out there. You're somebody in a cubicle right now is sitting next to somebody yeah. who's a monster. Yeah. And you would never know it because you're like, hey, how are you? And hey, is a coffee machine working? And they go home and they, God only knows. Right. Because it's like there's just a lot, you know, these human trafficking sweeps, when they sweep these people up, there's like a lot of them. Yeah. It's, it's really wild. Do you know that I read somewhere that there's more slavery today, right now, than, from, than was in 1865 when they made slavery illegal? That is interesting. So when slavery was legal in the United States in 1864, there's more slavery today. In places like Libya? All over the world. In Africa and stuff? The, just the, the sheer numbers of the world. Do, they, that are do they count people that are working at like sure Foxconn? You Googling that? Do you think they count people that work? <laughs> he looks very skeptical. He's like, well, like yeah, Jamie's, I'm, I've read that more goes. than once. Now, I'm pretty close to... Yeah, Jamie it. checked out if Michelle sure. Obama was a man. Yeah, he <laughs> he's did. like, he's, he's like, these these he's guys concerned. are on a road. I'm not oh. going down. Eddie sent me like a one of them boomerangs. Forty million supposedly. I mean, they're they're what slavery that they're Whoa. including us, uh, sex trafficking, any human trafficking victims. There's lots of. Uh, are they including so people that scope. work for Apple and well, like those factories, Foxconn? Probably, those are crazy, that right? Seems, uh, that seems odd. It seems odd that we go. Uh, well, you know, that's how they do it there. What? Incidents of modern-day slavery are only, only likely, likely to, to increase, increase as a result of some of the biggest challenges facing the world today. So they're, they're saying there's an estimated 40 million people are enslaved around the world, and a quarter of them are children. Now, let's That's Google, crazy. Let's, and in America, let's Google we're arguing, how many slaves were there in 1864. In America, we're arguing about whether the chicken sandwich shop we like supports our views. Yes, that's like, very important. That's what we're at. behind butt-fucking. Right, oh. or not. You mean like they, in America or the, America America or the yes, world? Yes, yes, yes. Or just in America? Well, if they have the world, I thought it was very fun watching like fat people threaten Chick-fil-A. Well, the Chick-fil-A thing is, is strange because like... It, 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 are they affecting policy? If they're affecting policy, I understand why I people mean, would be concerned. I mean, who knows? They're probably, listen, they're a corporation. They probably looked at themselves and said, we want to expand into more liberal cities and shit. Yeah. They're not, you know. Okay, here it goes. Yeah. Wow. It was only 31 million people back in 1860. Uh, that's total. That's the whole population. Was that's everybody. Million. Yeah. Th th uh, three million. million three. Wow. Dude, yeah, stop. We had less Just people. stop and look about that. In 1860, the census counted 31 million people in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. Right. 3,900 yeah. of them were slaves. 3 million. 3 million, excuse yeah. me, 3 million, 953,960, uh, 760 of them were slaves. And most of them were Irish. So it's one-tenth. Yeah. One-tenth of them were fucking slaves. More, it's more That's than one-tenth. Yeah. One-tenth of the people. It was, ba it was one bad. One out of 10 people was a slave. That's insane. Yeah, it was not a good... That was not a good period. Dude, that's insane. Yeah, that wasn't our best time. Just stop it. That, that's hard to believe. Well, that's why people don't understand, I think, when they when they talk about like you know racism being over. It's like, this was a, a massive thing, yeah. and it didn't stop at slavery. It was like another hundred years of people not you know being denied opportunities. And not stuff. just that. People yeah. being murdered. Murdered, people lynched. Being pulled, not only that, being pulled over by cops and yeah, with a bull disappeared. bullshit trumped up tribes, and they just sent them to jail and make them work for it's nothing. crazy. They basically re stated slaves as a lot of these jails yeah they have a lot of prison labor what Tulsi yes. called Kamala Harris out yes I Kamala know, Harris dude. is like one of these she people went, she went hard at her yeah she what's going her. on with do you think Tulsi is I mean she's not polling well I don't know about but any she's of that in, stuff dude yeah she's I'm the wrong guy to, I'm, if I'm talking about yeah. it you know what it's like it's like a guy who doesn't know jack shit talking to me about the UFC right that's that's how that, I that sound happens all yeah the time. yeah all, and I have to go <sighs> That's not really how it works. Right. Let me explain. This yeah. is the situation. And I think she's, I mean, I like her. I like that she went back at Hillary. That was a, do you think Hillary's getting back in? 
I don't she's, think so. I don't think so. Not with all this Epstein thing. She's probably got to kill a few more people. She's gr- probably busy. Great conspiracy <laughs> theory. Biden wins. He has Hillary as his VP. He gets impeached because of the Ukraine stuff, and then Hillary becomes the president. It's how Tulsi Gabbard's feud with Clinton helped extend her time in the spotlight. Yeah, well, they're well, always Clinton, going negative at her. Well, because she doesn't she doesn't she, take any of their bullshit. She, she gets all her bug. money. She gets all her money from the from the public. Well, it's she like knows Sanders, what she's they, doing they don't fuck with Sanders either. Mainstream outlets don't really fuck with Sanders. But no, they're not going to, and they're not going to fuck with her either. And the two of them together would almost be unstoppable. They're trying to. to, to there's a coronation with Imagine Elizabeth Warren. Those two together, Tulsi and Sanders would be crazy. Like, I mean, I know she wants to be president totally, and I would vote for her. I guess I say I guess because I look, I would vote for. Her. I would vote for Bernie too, though. Bernie has I, a I lot of interesting him. things. I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious as how's the how this all going to play out. I really am. I'm really curious. Yeah. Just the whole thing is like, whoo, where does this go? It's a crazy election. And it's crazy that when you look at the, the spate of Democratic candidates, you're like, there's nobody under 70? I wish Bernie didn't have a heart attack. I know, me too. But I think, you know, <sighs> listen, people have heart attacks. Did you hear that there were, it, it turns out probably false, but there were rumors over the last couple of days that Trump might have had a heart attack or had some sort of heart problem because he was in like... Some people were reporting that he was rushed to the hospital over the weekend, and they hadn't seen him for a couple of days. Mm. He came out this morning and said he didn't have a heart attack. It's like he actually addressed it. <laughs> Wait, who, who came out and said it? Trump? Trump did, yeah. Yeah, when someone tells you they didn't have a heart attack, you're like, why did you tell me that? I just love that we're being, yeah, <laughs> we're being run by people that are just getting ready to leave the planet. Yes. It's and, really and, crazy. And they're all scrambling in this power game that they're playing. It's really weird. Yeah. Can you imagine being that old and being billionaire? I mean, he's at least $1 billion. He's got like $3 yeah. billion. Dollars, and still wanting the job of being the president. Well, because I think money is anti- mm. anticlimactic. Yeah, I'm sure. I had a very routine physical. Yeah. Trump existed as speculation intensifies. I just, listen, if, you're, stayed out of the if you're going to bed at night and trip. you think this guy cares about you or you think any of them care about you, I just don't, I, I can't get on board with that. Well, that I, guy is yeah. like, he's in... He's in constant conflict, not like a soldier is, right. where it's like, but almost. And you have to really think about that. You have to really think about the constant conflict that you're engaging in if you're the president of the United States, whether you like that president or not. Obama was in constant conflict. This guy's in constant conflict. These guys are freaking out. They have that many people upset at you, that many people plotting against you, that many people that want to impeach you, that many people that don't want your policies, that many people that want to hold you by everything you've ever done ever in your whole life and bring it up every time you hold a press conference. Yeah. And every day is a fucking war. Right, yeah. It's a war. You can't be worried about, you could be worried about people in a very general sense. Yeah. But I don't think it's possible. Like when I, I got shit because I said, when Obama was crying because of a school shooting, I was like, listen, presidents kind of choose when to cry. Yeah. You know, people got mad at me about that. I'm saying that's not that he doesn't have emotion, but this is also a guy that's ordered the deaths of people daily. You know what being president's like? Yeah. It's like every four years, they hire a new man or woman someday, maybe, to kill the unkillable dragon. Right. And every year the person tells you, I got it, I got it, it's, I got I'm it. Slaying I'm slaying it. I'm going to fucking nail it. I got a plan. We're going to put it together. Right. If you make me the dragon slayer, we're, we're fucking peace yeah. here in and Mudville. The, yeah, and then they come out of the cave and they're like, I've made a deal with the dragon. No, they go and try to kill the dragon yeah. and they get fucked up. Nobody ever kills the dragon. No, it's, it's not meant to be killed. The system's not designed to be, but you can't say that people get mad because they're like, oh, you're cynical, you're this. But with this system that we're in right now is not really designed for a wholesale reimagining. Well, it's also it's not, not, de- it's not designed for three. 320 million people. No right. one ever thought that was going to happen. Right. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's that. I mean, these fucking people that came over here, man, they were riding around on horses. Do you ever read those, like, those, wagons. those, uh, you know, the Pentagon estimates for like the future of like mega cities? Oh my God. What's going to happen to places like LA and New York where oh you're just going to have endless, you know, populate and then strife and unrest and problems Dude. with, yeah. Dude. I mean, it's, it's kind of terrifying when you read that stuff. Well, with the, with the, um, Andrew Yang stuff with his theories about automation and and then and on top of that you put them all together. It's the a problem. Overpopulation. It doesn't matter what Ocasio Cortez tweets or Trump tweets. We're no. we're fucked. Did we're, you see that one with uh, Ocasio Cortez and this giant transsexual gal um, in uh, this? No, beautiful, but I already love it. Beautiful outfit. I mean, she's I don't know how tall AOC is. She looks like she's about five seven to me. Probably and this this lady next to her is a gigantor. And what was and the, she's painted orange with a with white face paint and, and she's w- clapping. 
And what was this about? What was this she, for? Yeah, apparently, uh, AOC went to a show and she was just giving the gal props. Yeah. And clapping, and she was like super animated. <laughs> like you don't really see a, a congresswoman do. Yeah. You know? And uh, and this this uh, trans woman was beyond thrilled. I'm assuming it was a trans. I mean, Did you see the one where they're at the rally and they start talking about eating the babies? That's amazing. Where AOC, somebody oh, yeah. stands up. That I mean, that's one of the funniest what do you think things. That is. is that someone who's doing like an onion thing? I hope so. I think so. I think that's somebody who's just yeah. doing a you know character. You know, or someone who's like legitimately mentally ill. Somebody who's legitimately mentally ill. But it was too funny and too good. Where I'm like, <laughs> no, this <laughs> this is somebody who's really because they got into it. You could see. I love that. It's like the scene from Borat. Uh, where he's doing the the speed the thing at the rodeo, yeah. and you could see their faces starting to change because they're like, oh wait, something's off. Yeah, you could see Acacia Cortez's face start to change as a woman started talking about eating infants. Yeah, and you could see Acacia Cortez. Yeah, I remember this. So good. <laughs> <laughs> You know, getting rid of fossil fuel is not going to solve the problem fast enough. A Swedish professor is saying, oh you know, God. we can eat de dead people, but that's not fast enough. <laughs> so I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you. You're, you're <laughs> oh, my God. This is amazing. Like, I, you know, now that I'm watching her, I'm like, maybe it is a real person. I think it's a real person. I love it. There's something too good about it. If it's not a real person, she's going to be the star of one yeah, of the Melissa she's amazing. McCarthy movies. Yeah, she's amazing. She just, we just heard her say that. And as I was Googling it, uh, Snopes came up and it says, did a AOC supporter suggest that? fact check mixture of results which i'm not going to go to the thing to read what okay. they say but like why wouldn't it just say true because well, that's what it said because it might have been a joke i okay. think snopes leans pretty hard left. hard left and establishment yeah they're very establishment like yeah. they check things against you know mainstream organs of opinion yeah oh this this might is great it, it might, might be. be might be what does it say a woman what's time? true oh she's working yeah they have stunts of doing this, a conspiracy group. She was an AOC supporter. Okay. They stated okay. their internet troll was to troll Ocasio-Cortez. And oh, good a conspiracy job. Group. Great wow. job. She apparently was working at the behest of a fringe conspiracy group with a history of such stunts. Of course. Yeah, why not? Of course. Have fun. Right, have fun. Have fun. And it seemed fake, right? It seemed, uh, I mean, it seemed real. It seemed but I mean, real. it seemed like there's no way someone really would want to eat babies. It would, it, it's, it's an extreme position. Fuck yeah. It's an extreme position. I just um, love. Did you see the her the video with her and the trans lady? Yeah, I was looking for. That. I saw it, but oh, I, I was trying that. to find it again. It's, that's a, that's insane. This lady's like. You think she six, would ever come six. on this show, Ocasio Cortez? Yeah, sure she would. Interesting. I'd be nice to her. Yeah, I like her. Been, yeah, she's sweet. She's twenty eight. She's man. she's daft. Yeah, though. she's. She said we're gonna get rid way? of planes and. Is that what I she mean, said? yeah, she come she's on. Si she's a silly girl. She's a bartender two years ago pouring Soko lime shots. You need a fucking far left to balance off the far right yeah you and need everybody extremes. just needs to be a little yeah, more you need reasonable just crazy people reasonable and, and see you need, it's great that we have a game show host versus a bartender yeah that's great perfect. Why which not? one's the game that's, show host again uh trump oh that's right and then yeah. she's a bartender and this is how it ends listen she why could, not she could i'm be gonna president. make i will make logan paul president dude he's a smart 10 guy years? He will run. YouTubers are going to have millions of dollars, millions of fans, and no skills when they're all 40. It's true. I will make him the president of the United States. He will not be that bad at it. He's disciplined. He's got a heart. I, I, will, I will be his Steve Bannon. I'm going to get involved in that. Yeah. I mean, he's One already had two fights. Yeah. Two boxing matches 100%. in front of the, the whole world. I think the next... the next group of political figures may come from the internet. They may be Maybe. YouTubers. It's possible. Yeah. Did you watch that fight? I watched a little bit of it. What'd you think? They're not bad. Yeah. I mean, they got wild. They That's, worked their asses off. They, yeah, they, they clearly did. They were in real good shape to fight six the rounds. The thing that happened when he hit him when he was down, that two-point yeah. thing mm -hmm. that he lost, is mm -hmm. that legit? You're not supposed to hit someone when they're down. Okay. okay. There it is. Look at that. P give me some volume. Can you do that or no? Bad idea? Amazing. <laughs> Impeccable. Genius. <laughs> You believe it from the revolutionary of our time. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for being What's the hug? Oh, adorable. Somewhere Pat Buchanan is sitting there being like, you see? <laughs> that threw me off so hard. You see? What were we just talking about before that? <laughs> um, the KSI Logan Paul yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they got wild. 
um, it's hard to keep your shit together when you're fighting in front of all those people. But if one of them had been able to keep their shit together and not go wild and just box, like, um, I don't know which one boxes better. It seems like Logan Paul was training with Shannon the Cannon Briggs, who's legit as fuck. I mean, he's like, you know, he was one of the top heavyweights in the world, former world champion. I mean, he's... He's a, he knows how to teach box. He knows how right. to fucking box. Right. Like, as good as it gets. Yeah. So he was working with Logan Paul. And he said some crazy shit like Logan Paul could be heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> He's yeah. white. He got money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think I'm that's saying what he, he could be said. the president. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about that. But I do know he's a real athlete. He's like, an athlete, yeah. 100%. He dedicated himself to it. I mean, I, I did yes. a podcast at his house, and he was training all day, mm -hmm. ice bath, all the things, you know, whatever. You, you can tell. You can tell. Like, And the same thing with KSI. They're both athletes. They both right. know how to fight a little bit, and they probably fuck up someone who's not as good as them. But it's um, they both got wild. And what that means is you, you start swinging for the fences, and sometimes you land, and sometimes you don't. But if one of them could have stayed technical and just boxed, and just fired off sharp jabs and clean right hands and moved a lot and kept your hands up and boxed. Don't get emotional. If they could just box and not get emotional, they'd start landing. And if you start landing, you start hurting the guy. You got to start hurting the guy with punches that aren't your hardest shot. They don't. You're not winding up with them. You're not exposing yourself. You're just yeah. fighting technically. That's the difference between someone who knows how to box a little bit and and start slugging versus someone who's smart. Right. And someone who who understands that when He's you're been under in a lot duress, of fights. Yes. Yeah. When you're under duress, you have to keep your te your your calm and be able to see everything. And the more you tighten up, the harder it is to see things. And then you start swinging, and then you you barely pay attention. Right. You, right. You, you might land and might knock the guy out. Still, you still have power. It's not an absolute thing. Right. But when you look at guys who are really good boxers, like Floyd Mayweather, does not get into fucking slugfests. Right. You know, he he's just actually. Executes everything he's executing. Yeah. He's figuring you out. He's finding the holes. He's popping them in there. He's not getting hit. And then eventually he starts chopping people down and breaking them down. You know? Right. And that's what he did with Connor. And Connor had, uh, I mean, it was a great money grab for Connor, but that, right. that didn't make any sense, right? But that these guys, the, what they are is they're both like at a similar level. The reason why it's so fun to watch is because they're, they're both like, they can hit a little bit. They both are good athletes. Yeah. And they're both kind of learning how to fight. And they're both super fucking famous yeah. online. Yeah. And then they get together. And then they're even bigger. I mean, it was explosive. They sold out the fucking stable. What does that hold? I don't know. It's crazy. Like Twenty thousand people. It's a or lot something. of people. It's a lot of it? people. It was one of the biggest internet 000. events, you know. Oh yeah. Because yeah. And it was a good fucking fight. I it's mean, wild. In, in terms of like entertainment value, they went after it. They didn't. Yeah. But I think if one of them learned how to just box, just stay like a fucking samurai and just box and never let that emotion get a hold of you. Hard that, to do at the, in, this, yeah, in the Staples do. Center. Very hard it's always hard to do, but it's even more hard to do when you talk shit to each other. Is it? Is there a similarity when you're when you, you're playing arenas now? Is that different when you're in an arena versus you being in a smaller venue? Well, it's nothing like a fight. Well, fights of course. So, the thing yeah. about fights is like, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It's happening. Right. And it's like all the preparation, all your nightmares, you get knocked out, all the weird right. feelings. You, like you get hurt in training. You have to work around it. It still hurts when you get in there. All that stuff that they're dealing with when they go in there is like stand-up times a million. Like the the thing about stand up is if like if you do your prep work and you get your shit together, you could do it many many nights in a row. Correct. They can't do that. That's they true. Got There's one they got one night. one chance. One chance. Like, one chance. You know that one time you did a joke and it just came out like shit. Yes. And you're like fuck. I wish fuck. I could do that show again. It right. It rots you away. It rots you away. Well, they sometimes people have moments like that athletically. Like you just you, you fucked up. You your chin was up high. You came in swinging. You got clipped. Once you got clipped in the first round, you tried to box in the second and third, and then he takes you out in the th in the fourth, and you're like, fuck. If I just played my fight right and played my game right, I could have outboxed him. Yeah. But instead, I did something stupid and I yeah. got clipped. But then and it's you, also, I guess, part of it is the show. Yeah. Part of it is the spectacle. It's so much. Well, I'm saying They're it's making, so much yeah. easier to do comedy. <laughs> no, like, of course. Even close. Of course. Of course. I will. I do want to fight Chelsea Handler. That's a good fight. That's a great fight. Me and Chelsea's a good be fight. Down with that. Um. First what would of all, fight over. Though? I mean, that her latest documentary, it's Hello Privilege, It's Me, Chelsea. We'll fight over that, <laughs> um, which was wild. I mean, you know, it was a little wild. Did you see it? No. It's her talking about white privilege in the back of her Bel Air mansion in the backyard. It's a fun one. Mm. And um, 
I just think she should go around and apologize for all the things. Like, she should go to the Gaza Strip and do, hello, Gaza, it's me, Chelsea. And Tuskegee Airmen, hello, Tuskegee, it's me, Chelsea. <laughs> I don't think and, they're allowed. Yeah, that. well, right. No, she has got to go to graves. She should just apologize for everything America's ever done. Go to Native Americans. Mm. You know, no, I mean, I, I, I kid around, but maybe these... <laughs> It's a joke. Don't, you know, <sighs> this is a joke. But maybe these celebrity fights are going to be bigger things. Like, yes. didn't Bieber challenge Tom Cruise? I mean, yes, Tom Cruise did. didn't accept. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Of, <laughs> Bieber just nowhere. wants to fight. I, be, I think Bieber's hilarious. He's, he's he, he, likes, he likes to fight. I think he's sober now, right? Is he sober? Is My friend saw him, him the other day in a, in a luncheonette in Beverly Hills, and sober wouldn't be the first word that would be used. Maybe smoking that reefer. Yeah. Again, he, he can have fun. He's in a war zone. His life's a war zone. It's wild. Became famous when he was like six years old. As a young, yeah, it's wild. And you, could you imagine yeah. the type of gals that put that punana in a fucking slingshot yeah. and twang? And, yeah, and he sent it, to, <laughs> sent it his he's, way. He's grown up. Uh, he's he's grown up with that. Yeah, he's I mean, grown up with NDAs. Oh, God. Yeah. And and bodyguards everywhere. I know. Everywhere you go, you're yeah. So he wants to fight Tom Cruise. He's yeah. probably like hoping Tom Cruise kills him. <laughs> Like take me out of this. Well, somebody was on a <laughs> somebody was on a flight one day with Leonardo DiCaprio, and the plane was like going down, and Leo wasn't nervous, and my friend was like losing their mind because they were nervous, and Leo just kind of sat there cool, and I'm like, yeah, because that's the only thing he hasn't done yet. He's been in a plane crash. He's done it all. He's done it all. He's ready to go. He doesn't He's need ready to be a legend. What experience do you need to have if you're Leo? At Probably this point? he was also absorbing the emotions of almost dying in a plane crash, just and then in just, case just to use them. That's a real sociopath. That that's a real. To... That's a real sick person. He's huh? just recording it. Yeah, actors are sick. It's not sick. He's involved in charity. Oh, sure they are. He's yeah. such a piece I'm of sure shit. I'm sure no one's laundering money. No. No one's laundering not. any money. No. It's real charities. Who? How many people had to do with that fire festival? How many people? Um, well, how many people? A lot of people. Ja Rule. Yeah. A bunch of people. That, uh, that's one of them things where you're like, wait, what? What yeah. happened there? Yeah. Well, it's the, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where like, the original Fire Festival was like the Iraq War, you know? And it was just like. I couldn't even watch how, the documentary. I, I watched I both of them. They're cringing they're, so hard. It's so great, though. Yeah. It's I was, fun to see. I was squirming in my seat. I was it's trying fun to watch to see, on a plane. It's fun to see people who want to do something stupid or something ridiculous. Yeah. You know, people that are status obsessed and everything get, get what's coming to them. What's this? Ja Rule dismissed from hundred million dollar fire festival class yeah, he's, action he lawsuit. He skated away. How did he uh, get dismissed? Lucky him. He didn't know. He well, skated he didn't away. Know. He probably didn't have anything to do with the business aspect of it. He's a fucking rapper, right? He probably got together with that dude. Think of the that dude lied to him. He thought the guy was telling him the truth. Next thing you know, he's involved in a lawsuit. Think of the people. The, think of the people. The day of fire festival. This is my favorite part of the documentary. When they know that it's never going to work. Right. They know that's an interesting. Yeah. They know that it's all over, yeah. and then the people are hitting the island that day. Do you imagine also thinking your first promotion? What is your first promotion? You do a, a, a theater. You're gonna try to right. uh, fill a small theater. No, no, no. My first one. I'm gonna do a, an island. An island. A and private I'm gonna, island. I'm gonna have people fly in, and I'm gonna feed them bologna sandwiches well, on white styrofoam. Yeah. <laughs> People with Supreme shirts are going to come in and eat Katrina food. Did you but, see Wild Wild Country? No. What is that? Is that the sex cult? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been told need, by multiple people to see you that. You need to watch that. I got to get into that one. If you think that Fire Festival is cringy. It, that one is bad this, too. You're just going to be like, what is happening? And is it a, is it a sex amazing. cult? amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, six episodes. Is it like six? Four? Something like that. Is it one of those where Some, by the end you can't feel bad for the people? It's like no, you yeah, feel bad. You still man. do. I feel bad about cults because I've been a moron most of my life. You know, I, I've never got roped into a cult, but I've been lucky. Yeah, cults have never lucky wanted with me. Nice so. parents. Yeah, you know, I've been lucky. I grew up in a pretty nice neighborhood. You never like got like you never look because every now and then I'll look at the Scientology building and go, huh. Oh, I did when I moved here. You know, sometimes I go, what's that? When I moved here, I bought a Dianetics book on, on the you know the TV app. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it meant. You didn't know what it was. You were I curious. I thought it was self-help. I had Anthony Bourdain, uh, not the Bourdain, um, Anthony Robbins. I had all of his uh All his his cassettes. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that uh, fucking yeah, he's great. get your shit together cassettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah all I gotta that. get my shit together. I was always trying to get my shit together. You so you just thought Dianetics, and did you read it? I didn't it? know what it was. And were you like, yeah. this is- I ordered the book. I got the book in the mail. And like most of those books back then, I would read them like four or five times and pick it up, read it for 
10 minutes. I'm like, what am I doing? And I put it down. Like, maybe I went through a whole chapter. Maybe. Like, maybe. Right. Best case scenario. Most of the time, I just sat. I'm like, this isn't working for me. I wasn't, I was, I was, wasn't disciplined. Like, I was scatterbrained. And so I was always looking for something back then when I was in my 20s. I was yeah. looking for something to give me discipline. Well, there's a lot of people in L.A., too. A lot of people come to L.A. looking yeah. for something to fill a void. And a lot yeah. of cults thrive here. Now, if you grew up, the thing is, if you grew up in uh, a, an orthodox religion, in a religion that's like very rigid, and you trust in them, even if it doesn't make any sense, like um, I know a lady who did that, where she grew up in the Mormons, and then she got out of the Mormons, and once she got out, it was really hard for her to tell if people were full of shit. She she felt like she was it was too easy to dupe her. Like right. She would get taken in by cult people, taken in by spiritual people, taken in by kook, kooks. She that, just put that yeah. aura out there. That Well, yeah. she just was not aware of bullshit. Right. Because she believed such crazy bullshit for so long. Like, if you're willing to believe yeah. that Joseph Smith found golden tablets that contained the lost right, work his of magic Jesus, underwear, and, and only yeah. he could read it because he has a magic seer stone, and then when the people came to read him, <laughs> the angels right. took him away because God was didn't believe you trusted him. Like, right. Nuts. That the 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 uh, Native Americans were a lost tribe of Israel. Like, right. It's like, wacky. If you're going to do that, why not you throw- believe anything. Yeah, why not believe anything? Zenu and- So, yeah. I, if I grew up like that, I would be like that. That's right. the That's the insidious part about cults. Like I got real lucky. My my parents, you know, my my stepdad's a hippie. My parents were kind of hippies when I was a kid. We got a chance to see all different parts of the country, San Francisco, Florida, Boston, but I never got roped in any religion or right. any cult. But if I was there yeah. and they took me in when I was six or seven, you tell yeah. me I would I wouldn't have figured it out or I wouldn't have uh, got stuck. I would have yeah. got stuck. Most of us would have got stuck. Yeah. Most of us, if we were young and impressionable, it's and, interesting. And I was a part of our community. Yeah. We get roped into it. I know people that came out of you know really religious upbringings, and it it does. It's interesting. It does something. Yeah. It does you something. know. Some of those people are, are, a lot of those people happen to be very trusting when they get out of those. It's interesting. You'd think trusting. they'd be, yeah, you'd think yeah. they'd be more skeptical, but they're actually very trusting when they get out of those things. It's a weird thing, man, when yeah. you think about getting roped into a cult. Yeah. You're a young person. You ever yeah. talk to, well, I, I know quite a few people that have had those kind of experience when they're younger, too. You ever talk to Metzger? Yeah, I mean, Kurt was uh, was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, yeah, his story's crazy. It's a wild story. It's it's a, all these wacky different ideologies. There's so many of them. Man. Yeah, you know. And I love that his mom was in sales. That's what me and him talk about because I was a sales guy, and that's its own. That's another cult. Mm. Oh so, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. be getting in that. So me and him always talk about that. Like that is also. Like, really good salespeople must be really good at picking up chicks, right? They're really good at everything. I mean, they're really good at arranging the world in a way that allows them to... And I think a lot of good salespeople, the ones that I've observed, they don't overthink. Mm. They they don't... They, they it, There's a simplicity to what a good sale is. I'm sure that you can write about it and make it more complex. But at the end of the day, there's just a... a, a, a it's like our, our lizard brains. There's something that happens like on a subterranean level where you walk in with, with a certain amount of confidence and you know, it, all of those hack lines in sales work mm. like hack comedy sometimes work hack sales lines work when it's like, all right, so if I can do this and this, does that make sense? That makes sense to you. And you say like when I was first telemarketing and selling mortgages and stuff, I would say, I can't sell that. I can't say this on the phone. People are going to laugh at me. Right. If I say like, if I say something patently ridiculous, like, listen, you know, if I don't help you, I don't eat. So let's just, right. you know, I'd be like, people are going to laugh at me. They're going to be like, this guy's ridiculous. But people are like, okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, really? I was also selling them in Long Island. But the point is ah. that those things work. Like those somewhat yeah. formulaic traps. things work. Yeah, they you're work. little psychological traps. Yeah, I mean, sales is a business of imitation. People... Yeah. People. And that's a lot of comedy as well, right? A lot of it, yeah. I think on the until you get really good at it, and then yeah. you either innovate or you really find what you're doing. But even like with sales, it's like a personality driven thing. Like you're trying to get this person to like you enough, and also enjoy the product enough. So you're trying to hype them up about it. Yeah, you got to show a certain amount of enthusiasm yes. yourself, so it's contagious. They got to like you. Yeah, yeah. Someone who's a good salesman will talk to you about certain objects with such enthusiasm that yeah. you'll get more hyped and up I, about the. I object. was always so bad that I wouldn't <laughs> shut up. 
up because I wouldn't shut up. And yeah. a bad salesman just keeps going. Yeah, and it's they, hard to know though yeah. when a good salesman can turn it on and not. Like you, you might be yeah. a bullshit customer. They don't want to give you the A game. Right. Well, I I would just talk. I would get to the you know. There's a moment in every sale where you're supposed to leave it all on the table, and not speak. Yeah. And then whoever speaks first kind of loses. That's like a tried and true sales method. So I'm like, Joe, if I could do this, you know, Wednesday, whatever, at this price, does that yeah. work? And then we just silent. And then neither one of us is supposed to talk. You're supposed to talk first, and mm -hmm. then you're you're supposed to submit, and you know we're supposed to do the deal. But I would like just go right back, and I'd be like, "There's more we can do." And then the guy yeah. would be like, "Oh, this guy's a clown." Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was something I was not meant to do. Yeah, you can't. You can't really. I think those guys that are really good at that, it's you're you're given an indication that you should do it. But I was around a lot of bad salesmen, and those that's. It's just like bad con. It's very sad. It's a weird thing, right? Because you're you're basically a charisma person, right? Like you're trying to smooth. So, like you shouldn't have to have a salesperson. It should be like this is the price on right. that. Right. You want it? Yeah. Okay. If you want it, go talk to that guy and you can get it. Yeah. But no, a guy's like, sir, can I help you? Welcome to Mercedes. Well, uh, uh, yeah. You know what? I see you in this car. <laughs> right. I right. see you in this car, Tim <laughs> Dillon. Oh my God, the convertible. Look, yeah. Look at it. One button. Look at that. Boom, <laughs> dude. You're driving, the sky's right. overhead, you're the king of the world. Yeah. I guarantee you, the way you'll feel hyped up in yeah. this car, it's going to make you kick ass in the office. Yeah, but see, I'd be so bad, they'd walk in the lot, I'd be like, do you like cars? <laughs> like, that's how fucked I was. I tried to sell copiers, mortgages, and sales guys are not guys that went to school. These no. are guys that are going to work around the system and become millionaires. Right, right, That's right. the way that we believe. So we don't know anything about structure or organization, or right. we're just throwing it at the wall, right. like a lot of comics. Like a lot of comics. A lot of comics. Just yeah. throw it at the wall. And I, yeah. I'm one of those people, I'm guilty of that sometimes too, <laughs> where I'm like, I threw it at the wall. Well, especially if you don't have a lot of sets. Like, what if you're only doing three sets a yeah. week? But when you, you when know? you tell us, like, the, the, the work ethic, when you're, like, in the car and you listen back and you do two hours and you listen back to the thing, it's like, we're all just like, okay, well. Yeah, this, like, as, as, especially as you get older, like me, um, and you run out of, like, I have to make these fucking premises work. And I'm doing a new special like every couple of years. Like you can't fuck around. It's a man. heavy workload. You gotta you gotta get that shit out there, and you gotta you gotta tighten up those bits with the most like focus that you can give. And them you go on the time stage at the them. store, and you you turn the lights off. There's no crowd work. There's no you just no. you just you just you let. It's like you're doing a special every night. Well, I'm just trying to tighten up these bits, right. you know, and adding yeah. to them and taking away from them and fucking with them, and it's the only way. Yeah, I've done it other ways. I've done it half ass before, where I only did a few sets a week and I recorded a special and it wasn't that good. And I've yeah. done it where I really hustled and it's always better. And I think, um, you know, I think. I think it's like a thing where you just kind of kind of stay on it and then know. Like, okay, I think I got something here. You got to know. Like, what this do you, is ready What to do film. you look at? Do you look at crowd work? Because every now and then if I do bid and it doesn't really work, sometimes I'll try to crowd work the audience back to being on my side and then try the next bit. Is that cheating? No, it's never okay. cheating. It's never cheating. I mean, there's nothing wrong with crowd work. Crowd work is great. Right. Some, some great comics are yeah. great at crowd work. Right. It's just... I feel, I feel like every comic owes it to themselves to have material too. Of course, I, I, of course. There's and some then, guys yeah. that never developed material. Yeah, they that's only, why they only yeah. had a crowd work act. Right. Yeah. But it, it's look, they can still work, but that seems like so crazy. No, you you, you want to say what you're about and tell your jokes. It's a different thing too. It's like it's a fun thing to right. work the crowd, but you never get a well crafted well-honed bit Never. that you're real proud and of. And nothing works again. Like a crowd work right. bit, there's, there's no <laughs> legs. Sometimes I'll try the next night to reference something that happened that I thought yeah. was funny and if it's just not in the moment, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's a crazy gig, bro. We got the craziest gig ever. It's crazy. Except Logan Paul and KSI. They which is, a crazy which gig too. It's a crazier gig. But our gig's weird because no one can teach you how to do it. Someone can teach you how to box. That's true. Like a guy can teach you to keep your hands up. And yeah. Punch comes this way. You got to learn how to catch things and move. Yeah. You got to learn how to counter. Nobody can teach you. No, you have to figure it out on your own. It's You can vary your approach so much in boxing, only so much. But in comedy, it's. Do you think people ending. getting into stand up now because of the way. That things are everything social media driven. Do you think that we're in the last era of like that traditional type of stand up where a lot no. of no people nah, still it's like martial arts. People are gonna get better at it, they're gonna wanna do it. People still wanna do it. Yeah, it's like people there's people still doing jujitsu. You know, they're, they're always gonna do it. It's not it's it's not 
ever easy. Right. It's never easy to do jujitsu. Dudes never. are trying to kill you. They're fucking grabbing right. your arm. And, right. Ah, you go right. home, you're always sore. But people are going to keep doing it. Most yeah. people are not going to do it. It's the same thing with stand-up. Although way more people are doing jujitsu than doing stand-up, you know, most people can do it because you don't have to have a certain personality like you do in stand-up. Yeah. But if you could just put the time in, you put the time in, you know, you, if you're a reasonably funny person and you start doing it and you put the time in and you, you're a driven person, you realize you can keep getting better if you keep paying attention to it, you're going to get addicted. That's What's, what happens. You do get yeah. addicted. What's Even more fun when than it's, killing? Nothing's more fun than killing. When you, especially like you're two years in, and you just sort of yeah, you just start to figure it out. Get and every now and then you got just one way. Just paid. Fucking boom. Just starting to get paid. Yes. You're doing gigs yes. wherever you can. You're driving around with your friends. Yes. There's nothing funner. I look back at those days. I'm so lucky that I'm still real good friends with Greg Greg Fitzsimmons. Yeah, I almost forgot his name. Greg Fitzsimmons. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that guy, Greg. It's, I almost fucked up his name, but we. Uh, we started out like within a week of each other. Yeah. Yeah. So we knew each other forever. In we Boston. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. did a shitload of terrible gigs together. It's hilarious. We, yeah. I forget about some of them sometimes, and he tells me about them, and then yeah. I'll tell him about one that he forgot. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it's you look back. Horrible, bro. And this is all 1988, 1989, wow. 1990. So you've days. seen the, the whole, you know, explosions, and, you know, it's yeah. like it's the bomb, booms and busts and the whole thing. Dude, I got so lucky. It's like I was on a video game. Yeah. And, and the video game led me to like uh, challenges in a, in a very unusual spot. Like I got so lucky that I walked into Boston right at the cresting of the wave of the comedy boom. I got here right before it hit the peak, and then it hit the peak while I was there, and then dropped off. Right. Dropped off, and then I left. I left it right at the right time. Not that it's not a great time to be at there right. right now. Right. But back then, there was... Three comedy clubs on one block. There was Nick's Comedy Stop, then there was a Comedy Connection on the same street, and then yeah. above it was the Comedy st st the Comedy um, uh, Comedy sh what would he call it? The comedy club at the Charles Playhouse? Yeah, that's that's what it was. And still some and of the funniest here, people in the world are from that yes. area in Boston. And yeah. then over here, right across the street, was a place called Duck Soup. So there are all four of them within walking distance, three of them on one block. Yeah. And then there was a Dick Doherty's comedy vault that was an old bank vault that was like a block away from that. Yeah, so you could just bounce around and... Dude, it was fucking crazy. And these guys were murderers. What made you want to do it initially? Like, what was the thing that made you want to do it? Well, I definitely didn't know um, if I could do it until I went to an open mic night. But it was, I had friends that had talked me into doing it. Okay. Guys that I worked out with. I thought it was funny. But I was saying a bunch of Did they think they, they thought you were maybe going to go bomb or, or no? No. They, they were like, you're funny. I was and, a young yeah. kid. I was 20, you know, at yeah. this time. 21 when I first right. started doing stand-up. But 20 when I was thinking about it. And I was just, uh, I just wanted a lot of attention. And so I would say funny things when I knew that everybody was nervous. Right. And so right before sparring, that was a big one. Everybody would be real nervous because we were sparring. It was, right. hard, it was hardcore, man. Right. A bunch of dudes, um, like as good as me or better, are kicking each other. It's like, woo, it's right. dangerous. We saw right. guys get knocked out. It was scary. Yeah, it scared the course. shit out of you, like sparring. Sparring yeah. is scary. And um, I would always make fun of things. When we'd go to tournaments, I'd make fun of people. I'd make fun of myself. I'd make fun of each other. I'd, I'd do impressions of my friends having sex. Right. Like, this is what I think you sound like. And everybody would be laughing. But I would just try to make them laugh. Right. right? But I didn't think, oh, I'm going to be a comedian. My friend Steve Graham, who I'm still good friends with to this day, was the one who told me, you should be a fucking comedian. That's crazy. Yeah. And, you, and so what's the first open mic night that you walk into? Um, August 27th, 1988, Stitches Comedy Club. This little comedy club. Still there? No, it's not there anymore. It was uh, is it like Massachusetts. It was next to another place that was like uh, larger. I can't remember the name of the other place, but the other place was that was next to it that was really pretty big next to Stitches. Fuck, I wish I could remember. It was like a rock club, and they occasionally have big acts there. And I went to see um, Jerry Seinfeld there. Wow. With uh, this chick I was dating when I was like this nineteen. Is, it's eighty eight. Yeah. This wow. was this no this was even before that. I went to see Jerry Seinfeld there before I ever did comedy. I went to see Jerry Seinfeld. I was maybe maybe 20, like maybe. Somewhere, wow. around, somewhere around there. And how does that first set go? Um, to my first, terrible, just, terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Because my first set was okay, but it was in like a coffee house. Who cares? That barely counts. It was. Uh, you were in an actual club. I was in an actual yeah. club, actual open mic night. Real, you know, I felt real weird. Weird to he hear your voice. On a microphone for the first time. Yeah. Barely got laughs. Got a couple ha 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 ha. And were your friends there and now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A okay. bunch, bunch of my friends. Guys that I'm still friends with. Shout out to Jimmy Dutilio and Jimmy Lawless. 
Those guys were there. Um, uh, some other people that I went to high school with were there. And I was oh. terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> But they went to it's see me tough. years Every now and then you'll, you'll see a guy, young guy whose family's in the audience, and then he'll go up and just have a real rough time. Yeah, yeah man. It can it. happen. You shouldn't bring your whole family. It was a stupid move yeah. on my part. I've done it. I've I didn't want to drink before I went on stage. Yeah. And one thing I did make a decision. I said, look, if I have a drink right now before I go on stage, I'm probably going to want one every time I go on stage. It's true. Because this is like right when I started legally drinking. Right. Because I had turned uh, 21 on August 11th, and this was August 27th. So it was just a few weeks. And so a couple weeks, right. and it was one of those. Ooh, I don't know if you should do this. Right. <laughs> don't drink every don't time set you get this up precedent. There. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking it's that. Bad. Well, I was very aware of that. I was like, just go up there because I was so scared. I was, I was hoping that they didn't call my name. There's nothing like the fear right before that first time. <laughs> oh my god, it's a lot of fear, dude. I had fought so many times. Right. I don't even know how many times. For years and years, traveled all over the place, kicking people in the face, getting kicked. I mean, I did that all the time. That didn't scare me as much as going on stage that first time. I was right. shitting my pants. But once I did it once, I was, it alleviated a lot of that. And it became less and less, like, After over time. you did it, did you feel yeah. like, oh, but fuck. still nervous. Were Always you, still nervous. Were you you're like, I'm going to do this again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought immediately this is what I'm going to do. Like, immediately. I've never had a voice in my head, Ever. But that time I did. That time I did, I was about to chicken out. And uh, I heard a voice in my head say, no, this is what you're supposed to do. Now, clearly, I think that's my imagination. And clearly, I think it's probably me knowing that I was going to be a pussy. So come on, stupid. So I was probably talking to myself right. in, inside my head. But dude, it felt real. Yeah. It felt like a voice was telling me, uh, don't be a pussy. This is what you're supposed to do. Come yeah. on, just do it. I this think a lot of people have this that. This is what you're supposed to do. I think a lot of people have that. I think I, I wanted, the first time I did it, I said, maybe I should do it in a week. Maybe yeah, I'll be more prepared yeah, yeah, in a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll push it off. But then you just go, I got to just do it. Well, the host of my first open mic night was Jonathan Katz. Oh, yeah, a, Dr. Katz. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Katz. Yeah, famous Boston comic. Great guy. And um, he, uh, I put my name in for the list, but there's a lot of people on the list. And he wasn't sure whether or not I was going to get on. And sometimes people would sign up and then they would chicken out, right? So I'm in this position where he's like, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get you up. So give me uh, a couple minutes and I'll know for sure. So during those couple minutes, I was thinking, I should just say, fuck this. I'm getting out of here. Right. You know, I'm, I'm shitting my pants. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and then he came back and then I had that thought that said, no, this is what you're supposed to do. Come on. And you got in there and then he yeah. came up to me. He goes, so, hey, I'm going to be able to get you up. And I was like, oh my God, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's always the word. And that's the word. And that's happened to me where it's like they come up to you and you, you're almost waiting. You're ready for him to go, we can't do it tonight. And you go, okay, it's great. Uh, yeah. Great. Like, Don't worry about you. it. But he goes, no, 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 you're good. You're on next. And yeah. you're like, fuck. Yeah. I think I had one or two people in front of me. That everybody was doing five minutes. One or two people in front of me where I could just relax. But it was amazing. You know, it's like. It allowed me to get my feet wet. It allowed me to move my feet, and I and it was also the first time I'd ever been. I, I mean, first time I'd ever seen like legitimate professional stand-ups performing in a club right. like that, too. right? Like in those environments with amateurs. Like the first time I ever saw like the stark difference between a guy like me and there was this guy Teddy Bergeron, who's another Boston legend. He's a yeah. fucking animal. He was so yeah. funny, and. The, there was a couple other guys would stop by those open mic nights back in those days, like pros, like local yeah. pros. They'd do five, ten minutes, just work some material out, right. just stay, stay sharp. There was always, everyone was staying sharp. Yeah. You know, and and you, you got to watch, that was the first yeah. time you got to watch that. You got to see that and you're like, holy shit, like you can get to this level? Yeah. Like you see like a real pro, all smooth, yeah. delivering the, and then you Murdering. can see him, see him do that same joke again and again and again and kind yeah. of break down the mechanics yeah, of it. Yeah, and you say, oh, okay, I get, I get mm -hmm. how he's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool thing about the store as well. It's great, yeah. We, we, we all get to watch each other work, and everybody's, yeah. you know, Tony Rock is different than Jesselneck, is different yeah. than you, is different yeah. than Joey Diaz. Right. Everybody's got their own style. Everybody you know? has their own style. I saw Joey Diaz the other night in the original room. Just He was like, it was like no, one, I had rarely seen sets like that, where it was like he was just so fucking in, in a zone yeah. that it was like... Uh, you, 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 for that 10 minutes nobody was on the planet anymore Yeah, nobody was in the you know it was just like everybody had been elevated to somewhere else it was wild to watch he goes and for I was it. happy I was not after him yeah I was very happy I was That's not a tough spot I was like oh there's, there's just two people but then then it's like well I'm gonna I'm gonna go after him one day not tonight yeah <laughs> 
one day. <laughs> Not tonight. I'll Dude, sit in the back. That's a he's a tough guy to go on after. Tough follow. You yeah. used to bring him to open all the time. Always. Yeah. And one yeah. times I ate shit in New Jersey. Yeah. I ate shit in Rascals going on after him. Yeah. He was loose as fuck. And when I say ate shit, it, I pulled it off, but not really. Right. You know what I mean? Like I didn't. They didn't get booed off the stage, but I know it wasn't very good. And uh, he fucking murdered. And I remember something happened in the crowd. He's fucking with them, and it was crazy. It was just crazy. There was a yeah. wild crowd, and I was stiff. You know, this was back then. I was just. Do you ever feel that's stiff. my biggest problem? Is when I feel stiff on stage, yeah. and I feel like I'm not in a groove. Yeah, it, I, I'm like, I gotta. This is a problem. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard yeah. to break out of that sometimes. And back then, I was terrible at it. I just didn't yeah. matter. And I, but I thought to myself, like taking him on the road with me is a great exercise. It's like bringing a training partner with you that can definitely strangle you. Yeah. So you're forced to really up your game. You know, yeah. If, you, if you're working with Joey Diaz, you can't. Not, a lot of the great. You gotta be sharp. A lot of really good comics. Great comics bring. Openers that are that are you know good, I think that's the move. Yeah, because I've seen guys do the opposite and they do it on purpose. They do it. They think that what they're going to do is they're going to give people uh, like a shitty comic for like fifteen twenty minutes and then they're going to go on after them and look like a hero. Right. I just don't. I don't think that's the way to go. No, I it's, think it's also it doesn't help anybody because the shitty comics. The reality is, a lot of people that are really really shitty. They're not going to get much better. It's they hit the ceiling. Yeah, I mean, it's it, occasionally people do. You can never say never. Cause some people just figure things out. Some people have, you know, they start meditating. They fucking they turn it around. They, yeah, they turn it around. They yeah. figure themselves out. They mature. Maybe they get their heart broken. Maybe they become a parent. But that's a, that's yeah. a, minor, a small minority. Yeah, it's a small minority. People. Yeah, I mean, it's a small minority of any of us that make it. But yeah. out of all of us that do make the, it to a professional yeah. status. The ones that are like really terrible in the beginning are rarely capable of, of yeah. progressing That's to a, the like one a thing headliner that state. Like really shocked me is the amount of people that go from amateur to professional in this, it is a tiny fraction. It's a people. tiny fraction. It's yeah. a tiny fraction of people that go from open mic nights to headlining at the improv. Yeah. It's a super, super, super small fraction. And it's not that they're not capable of it either because sometimes people just a little wrong zig or a little wrong zag and then they go off the track and then they don't come back you also have to so not open you have to like getting kicked in the face a little because things are gonna bit. i mean you're gonna have those times when things are not good and yeah you have to deal with that yes yes I like i remember one guy looked at me once he had a really rough set and he ended up quitting like two weeks later but he looked at me you could see it in his face he goes this wasn't fun and yeah. you could see he was internalizing that in a way that was going to lead him eventually to the exit door. I think sometimes that just, you know, it's the, the pain of the bombing. It's just like you're not equipped for it. Right. You know, it's at different points in your life, you're equipped for different kinds of pain, right? And sometimes the pain of that rejection of bombing is yeah. just you're already an emotional mess and you're already so fucking barely hanging on, you know. You're you're so fragile. Yeah. And that that hits you. That pushes bombing. you pushes yeah. you off the ledge. And, and sometimes people aren't. They're not equipped to handle the killing. Oh yeah, that too. Because then they sure. lose. Yeah, the other side. Yeah. Well, people get like legitimate fear of success. Right. I mean, the, the pressure of the unknown is fucking. It's scary. It's scary. Like you're, you'd rather know that you're not going to make it. You'd rather right. rather know well, that you're you going to be a schlubby loser. Yeah, because if you fail, you if you succeed, you can fail. Yeah. Like if you take the real risk, mm -hmm. you can. That's why like a lot of people don't move to New York or L.A. because that's you can fail. Yeah. In a real way. There's a there's a bunch of fears, right? There's a fear of uh, keeping up with people's expectations. Like when a comic starts to develop a fan base, you see that sometimes they get scared. Yeah. They get scared these people are gonna like not like them someday. Or turn on them. Yeah, or turn on them. Yeah. You know, people sense that too. Yeah. They know they know when you're scared. They know that, that they own you. They come to get you. They control you. They come to get yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's um We've all seen guys go bonkers. I, th I honestly think people used to go more bonkers back in the day when they got development deals. Yeah, they were just handed hundreds of thousands Ooh. of dollars, millions of dollars. Not only that, but everybody had like some crazy story about their show definitely is going to go and uh, already picked up by Universal and they have a $1 million backup deal and Warner Brothers is really interested in right. it. And, dude, you'd have these conversations with these people. And back in the deal days, you would say to a comic like, hey man, what's up? And he's like, hey, well, everything's real good right now. Warner Brothers picked up my pilot, and I'm in the middle of this process where uh, I'm taking my life story. I'm going to turn it into a cartoon. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Well, I just want to say hi, Bert, man. Bert told me, hi. he goes, you know, you used to do a five, seven-minute set at the improv, and if you killed, there was a chance somebody in the back had a bag of money. 
Sometimes. 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 You know? Definitely festivals were big for that right. in the 90s. If you could kill at Montreal, you could get some sort of a deal. If you could kill you know, in front of all those executives that are on vacation. Montreal was a big one. That was huge. Yeah, big, big, big. When I did it, my agent bought me a uh, lunch. That's good. I did great. That's wor- it's worth lunch now. But that's, that's, what, it's that's what it's you get. You killed. I had a great <laughs> set, and they go anywhere you want, which it wasn't. It was where they wanted, but it was still fine. But the development got a deal thing, meat sandwich. What would happen with the development deal thing would be you would get a deal, and then you'd be convinced your show was going to go, and then you started acting like you were famous, and there was right. A lot of that. That's now people do that after Dude, they have one Conan set that no one watched. A lot of that. Like yeah. I, my my agent at the time would get she had clients that would, you know, they would just run up to her and just at any moment want to discuss their career like in depth, <laughs> like at the Laugh Factory, you know, phone calls at one o'clock in the morning. Like people were nuts, and they they started demanding that you treat them like the up and coming star that they know they are, and. A shit ton of them just went away, man. And a lot of that, and it was just people. They were like, "This, it's all happening," and mm-hmm. they just let it get to their head. Well, but and then if you're the head of a show, like you know, I talked to Roseanne about it. She was talking about how she went fucking bonkers, yeah, when she was running her original show and was making all that fucking money like out of nowhere, right? You know, that's one of the reasons why I work so hard to like get her comfortable and talk to her on yeah. the show and get her to open up about. Who she really is. Cause most people don't even know the story about her getting hit in the head by a car when she was 15, spending nine months in a mental health institute. It's crazy. Like, that's what she is, man. She's yeah. like a legit head injury, a yeah. tra- head trauma victim. Yeah. And a brilliant comic. And one of the best yeah. comics ever. Right. But people need to understand, like, you got, if you guys really respect mental health, right. like you say you do, if you're right. really compassionate, like you say you are. This is not a bad person. She's no. not a bad person. She's no. a person who was hit by a fucking car yeah. when she's 15 and brained. And she lost her ability to count. Yeah. She couldn't do math anymore. Yeah. She has challenges other people don't. But it's, the, you know, a lot of these people, you know, with Shane Gillis, you know, these are the same, the guy on SNL, these are the same people that are like, talk about mental health all day. And mm-hmm. then they're tweeting this kid every single two minutes that, he, yeah. you know, he should be. You know, executed. thrown out of a window. It's like you don't yeah. you, know, you don't know any of these people personally, right? And the idea that you could just wield this online mob is, and and then the next day be like, hey, self care is important. I know it's, it's crazy. Just, it's so hypocritical, but it's also like what we were talking about earlier about people leaving comments on your YouTube, yeah. or Whatever. It's like, I get it. It is what it is, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know, and I I don't think it helps to go back and forth with people. Yeah. I think it just inflames people. Right. But But I do get where they're coming from, just like I get the people that are hating on Shane Gillis. Right. I get the people that went after Roseanne. That when yeah. people see you limping, man, they start kicking you. Yeah. And it's, it's a normal part of being a person. Yeah. We've all seen it. You know, we've all seen... Uh, it's one of the uglier components of our nature. Dude, world star hip hop's got some of the best <laughs> examples of all time. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. One guy gets punched, he goes out cold, and everybody just starts kicking him. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Dude, it's rough. Yeah. I've seen a bunch of those. Right. A bunch. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's a part of being a person, you know? And uh, mob mentality is fucking real. It's real in person, if you've ever experienced it. I've been in a couple of situations before where it just felt like anything could break out at any moment and things got wild. The last one was at the Conor McGregor fight, okay? When Conor McGregor uh, fought Khabib Nurmagomedov and then yeah. Khabib jumped out of the octagon and had a street fight with Dylan Dennis and people are flying into the octagon, jumping over the top and punching Conor in the face and... It was one of those feelings like, holy shit, anything can go on right now. And I'm still broadcasting. Pure chaos. Yeah, but there's a feeling in the air. And then if it did go crazy, people would be swinging. Everybody would be swinging. People right. would be brawling with each other for no fucking reason. People would just look at you and try to punch you. You'd be it's like, just what? What, how, yeah, what the fuck is this about? Yeah, man, sometimes yeah. things just go haywire. Right. Sometimes things go haywire. And I think there's a built-in part of being a person that recognizes when things are off the rails and you go off with them. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's what the mob mentality is. Interesting, because you're just scared of being alone. Mm-hmm. No matter what it is, yeah. you're scared of being alone. You'd rather be in the chaos with others. Have you ever talked to Jamie Kilstein? Not a little bit. Yeah, I know he follows me on Twitter. He's a, he's a nice guy. Very nice guy. He was a super duper social justice warrior. Right. And uh, they turned on him. Right. And 
you know, he realized like, oh my God, this is what I was doing. And he realized that like, he would go after people just to like get this charge of seeing people respond, you know, so he would dopamine to rush. attack a politician or yeah. attack an actor and call someone a bigot or call someone a pedophile or whatever the fuck. Whatever it is. What, yeah. I mean, I don't think he did that, but it, whatever you wanted to call someone, yeah. he's just, he just trying to press a button and then the, 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 the thing's coming back at you yeah. and then you get addicted to it. Yeah. It's you get addicted dopamine. to this game yeah. and we're all doing it. Yeah. We're all doing it. And what we need is not that there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with you and Twitter and Instagram or any of these things. Don't get me wrong. But I think we got to spend more time just talking to regular people. I think our yeah. race is slowly getting sucked into the machines. These Do you think that maybe the next generation will be like Luddites or, you know, they'll be anti-technology or they'll at least... No. No. There's no, no shot, right? There's no chance that this the, the wave will recede a little bit and that people will recognize this? I don't think so. Yeah. I think a few people are screaming out while the herd of us is running towards a cliff. <laughs> yeah, my friend, my friend Jessa Reed, who's a very funny comic, her mother was saying, you know, she has daughters. She goes, you know, you let the kids on the phones too much. She goes, mom, in 10 years, they're going to be the phone. Yeah. She was like, the phone's going to be inside of them soon. Yeah. So it's like, well, I, well I what, what am I fighting? Do. You know, yeah. what am I fighting with? Yeah. I limit my kids' time on the phones, except the older one, of course. Do you? Do you <laughs> <laughs> just go up to her. You're like, you I just don't think that um, it's do you a, control a challenge. The content? That we, yes. You, yeah. I just don't think it's a challenge that we ever face. Are they allowed to watch InfoWars? Uh, all, all day. That's Good. all we have. Thank God. Yeah, we pro project Good. it. <laughs> um, what, what else is. Um, the, the keys uh, screen time screen time's a big key yeah um, tell her about Epstein Epstein didn't kill himself that's big you gotta tell Huge. them that before they start googling and yes. for themselves they gotta know they gotta, they gotta know. know it fucks up your sleep when you're on a, I fall asleep to a podcast you're gonna laugh oh, that's not good. I used to fall asleep to Alex I would listen to Alex's clips on YouTube and I would fall asleep to just uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, and I, I would be able to put me to sleep. You know what I think his best video is to this day. He's the one of the greatest entertainers of our time. You got to, but you got to yeah, watch him. When I first met him, yeah, he wasn't. The I've been Alex listening to Jones him people see today, and GCN, I think yeah. the Alex Jones that he is today is changing because of his not being. Uh, not drinking. Well, he's in. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, because he's clean for ninety days. Interesting. Like, he sounds yeah. different. But what I'm thinking is, when I first saw like nine eleven Road to Tyranny, it was one of the first videos that I ever watched. I was like, whoa, like it's one of the first videos that ever opened my eyes up to certain conspiracies. And one of them was the conspiracies of using agent provocateurs to incite violence. Yeah. In riots. Yeah. To, to incite that feeling of chaos. Yeah. And then that they use that as an excuse for the police to come in and start arresting people. Of course. Because yeah. now it's no longer a peaceful protest. And it's they do it all yeah, the time. And so he was making this argument about the World Trade Organization. Yeah. Uh, WTO. Yeah. Yeah. And so he showed all these videos of these guys coming in with uh, government issue work boots on. They have like fucking the same soles as like government issue work boots. They're wearing ski masks, breaking buildings, lighting shit on fire, smashing everything. And then the cops come in and clean everybody up. And then they actually made it a no protest zone. Interesting. So you, a guy went through, or a woman, I forget which, but had a pin with a WTO on it with a red line on it. They told him you had to take that pin off. Yeah. the, the America. Well, yeah. Well, it's just every every protest resistance movement has been infiltrated. The FBI did a Cointel Pro. Mm -hmm. They did it with you know the Black Panthers. They've just done it with everybody. But Every, when he plays yeah. that video and you see that and it's like real clear and then you hear the, what, how it all played out that all the agent provocateurs wound up going to a safe house and then the police released them. That's like crazy. They negotiated with the police and the police released them. You're like, yeah. wait a minute, what? Yeah. Like, you, there's not even an yeah. arrest made? It's probably somebody's job in the FBI to dye their hair pink, and, like, <laughs> go into Portland and start throwing rocks at Ben Shapiro or well, something. Back then, they were just allowed to wear ski masks and shit. Right. They would just start smashing shit, and yeah. you couldn't even know who they were. Yeah. And back, you just yeah. assume that that was... I mean, it's such a crazy way to stop a protest, and I never thought about it until I watched it. But a video. smart way, too, when you oh, think about it. It's fucking real smart. <laughs> you know, it's... These but guys a, know what they're doing. They, but they've been doing that kind of shit forever. Yeah. You know, that's like standard yeah. operational procedure. 100%. Fucking, this is a, a weird time for conspiracies. You it's know, weird. They've gone mainstream, which is yes. not good. Very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Well, Trump's into a lot of them. He's into a lot of them. Yeah. And I think there's not a huge, there's only a small group of people that want a rational discussion about them. Right. People really just want to be emotionally fed. Mm -hmm. Does this feel right to me? Yeah. And there's a very, like I had a guy call me today. He's a very smart guy. He wrote the Franklin Scandal, which is a book about the original Epstein thing, like the original sex trafficking thing. What's that? Well, the Franklin Scandal was a it was a scandal out of Omaha, Nebraska, the Franklin Credit Union, where there was oh. a guy who was embezzling money, and then he was being investigated for that. But they said he's all he has all this money because he's running an interstate pedophile network, and he's pandering kids to you know people in Washington D.C. and New York. And there was a a headline in the Washington Post or the Washington Times that were like, "Call boys get a tour of the." 
the Reagan White House. And, you know, this was a scandal with real victims who wanted to testify and then people started dying. You know, the private investigator they hired, his plane broke up. Uh, one of the girls that uh, testified was found guilty of perjury and then she was put in solitary confinement. They had to use two grand juries in Omaha to get rid of this scandal. And it's one of, now it's not as sexy as like a Pizzagate or something because it happened in the 80s and 90s, but this shows you the blueprint for the government, you know, using marshalling resources to, to silence people that were victims of this stuff. This is not new. Congressmen, senators, blackmail being used by intelligence agencies. None of it's new. It was pioneered by the mafia. You know, intelligence agent, Whitney Webb, who lives in Chile, and I've had her on my show. She writes a lot about this stuff. You know, this is, you know, if you want people to talk, you need info, you need leverage. Yeah. There's nothing, that, there's no more leverage than you having sex with somebody who's underage, then they own you forever if they have photo, audio, video of you doing that. So these things have been going on for a while, and the Franklin scandal was one of the first. But, you know, the guy who wrote it, this guy Nick Bryant, called me today, and he goes, I can't get any agents. It's very hard because, like... You know, the reality is mainstream media is uninterested in, in, in a lot of these stories unless they're current and they're sexy and online fringe people are only interested if they're um, insane. Well, there's so many of them yeah. now, though, too. There's yeah. so many. It's hard to keep track. Like you, you were just saying that you were just in Dallas. Did you do yeah. the drive? Did you do the... the I didn't do the drive, but I went to the X where he was uh, shot. Oh, where he was shot. There's there was five there? Canadians there, and they were like... I was just started giving them an impromptu tour of Dallas because they were like, is this where Kennedy got wet? And I'm like, yeah, this is how it happened. How many people do you think have stood there and went like this? Right, yeah. A ton of, <laughs> a ton of, I wanted to do it. Yeah, there you. it is. There it is. Wow. I wanted to do it with a Popeye's chicken sandwich and just write, you know, this is America. It says this is where Princess Diana was killed. Yeah, we just had a little fun. Is that really where Kennedy was killed, though? That's exactly where he was shot. That's wow. exactly where. And how cryptic wow. is that? that look how angry you look. <laughs> yeah. You're a crazy person. Well, I'm just trying to have a little fun. I understand. It's a weird thing to I joke know. around about. It's, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go to the school book depository, and it is super close. Like, it could have happened. Oh, for 100%. sure. 100%. Listen, everybody who says there's no way he could have made those shots is out of their fucking mind. There's right. not that. That, far. that is not the thing that makes me think it's a conspiracy. It's right. literally everything else. Yeah, it's every other component of the story. Yeah, there's it's a lot Oswald of being shot yes. immediately. Yes, I mean that's Oswald. Sure, surely could have been in on it. Of course. Yes, he could of have, course. He could have definitely been in on it, or he could have definitely been set up. I Both mean, of like, those things are possible. And, and and Dallas has an interesting energy because of that. Yeah. Like it's a great city, but it does feel like it feels like a city of think people that keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. A lot of big corporate steakhouses, high end hotels. Yeah, a lot of people carving up, you know, deals. You know, it just feels like you know something's going on. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So that's where he is, and that's the building up there. See, that's not that far. It can happen. I think they said it's uh, just like 150 yards or something like that. It's not when you're actually there. It looks even closer than this. Yeah. How many yards was it, Jamie? Find out how many yards Oswald had to shoot to hit Kennedy. But it's totally doable. And people that say that's not, you're crazy. They're nuts. And people that say that you can't un, uh, like load a, a gun that fast, maybe you can't. I bet you someone can do it faster than you. Yeah. I've seen guys use bolt-action rifles fast as fuck. Yeah. Could they get off three shots in that amount of time? I don't know, but I, I'm not, I don't think it's magic. I don't think it's like something impossible. The other thing they said was like that the scope was off. Like anybody said that doesn't know shit about scopes. All you have to do is handle it a little bit, drop it, bang it against things. It was to the me scope it was goes off. the idea that that guy was killed immediately. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I've read a, book, a couple of books on it, but the idea that he gets killed immediately. Yeah. That's where you go. Something's wrong. Yeah. Oh yeah. Something's oh, com yeah. just completely. Uh, 183 meters is what I just found. 183 meters. What is that in yards? What is it's about 200 yards? Is it? what this says i don't know if this is what the actual okay. accurate measurement was but that's what i just found that's interesting i didn't so know it was it that was, much of a disparity this says it was never more than 90 yards from from the oswald's the supposed location so there's a lot i mean oh okay so where he went things. when he got the final shot was that far it was 200 yards no that doesn't make any sense yeah. he was m never more than 90 yards from oswald's yeah, location how's that work two separate uh, I didn't know that <clears throat> 183 meters was 200 yards. That's crazy. Yeah. A meter is pretty close to a yard. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Right, but that, that's why I thought it would be like 185 or something like that. Like, there's actually a formula for doing that, for converting uh, meters to yards. Yeah. You add one of the last numbers or some shit. I forget how it works. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because it really is... 
you know, Christopher Hitchens said that the Kennedy assassination was the movement that, like, that moment was the, the psychic movement of the 60s started. Mm. Like, that was the fracturing of reality for a lot of people in the same way that maybe Epstein was, where it just kind of... No, a president's got to be way bigger, man. It's huge. It was huge. It was this big thing that, you know, it was a, a traumatic event that people dealt with in a bunch of different ways. No one's sitting around going, do you remember where you were? When yeah, you when Epstein, Epstein died? Well, you don't have the friends I do. It's <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of but people on Reddit saying that. But yeah. it's like 9-11. Of course. Almost. Yeah. You know, similar. Yeah. Almost, like Those like, are the events. Unless you knew somebody in 9-11, yeah. it's probably bigger than Do you think it's possible that down the road, not that the government like did it, but that they, we, we find out that there was a substantial cover-up. You know, We didn't know about Saudi Arabia, their involvement for a while. There's, oh, it, for 9-11? Yeah. Is, do, do you think it's possible that we just you don't know the whole story? It's totally possible. Course, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any idea what was being done or who was involved and yeah. i know that there was a bunch of hijackers and they flew planes into those buildings but who was behind that who the fuck knows yeah how would we know like, great question what yeah, part of know. you know what part of saudi arabia where they all came from like who where'd they get their orders from like how yeah. they how they organize this i mean yeah i think they know. know a certain amount and i think a certain amount they'll probably never know yeah and we'll all but, go to our death not knowing. What do you think about that one that got shot down? They they've shot th that let's roll one. Yeah, they, they, fl they yeah, shot Yeah, they down, shot right? that down. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they said that thing the the flight the the uh, rubbish the wreckage was scattered for miles. Yeah. I mean there's there's no yeah. way they didn't shot that down. But there's a lot of things about that day where you look back at it and you go this is just weird. Yeah. It's weird that a building fell that wasn't hit by anything. It's just weird. I'm well, not saying it can't happen, but that's odd. It's definitely odd. That's the odd. Way, the way it looks is odd. It looks like a controlled demolition. But yeah. if you watch the full version, there's a guy who used to be like a full-on 9-11 truther, and then he started like then the CIA paying started attention. Paying him. Yeah. And he started just oh. paying attention to the flaws in his way of thinking. Sure. And uh, one of the things that he found out was that the version of Tower 7 that most people see is uh, a version that's very quick. It just it, it implodes and it just falls down. But for minutes before that, you can watch the center of the thing collapse inside of it. Oh, interesting. And the, and okay. the way, have you ever seen that version? I've never seen that version. Pull up the can we full see that one? version. Yeah, it's very interesting. Full version of Tower 7 collapsing. Yeah. So I want to find one that well, includes Well, because the 911 people center. get so crazy. They're yeah. like, there were no buildings. It's all holograms. There were no ah, planes. New no York planes doesn't exist. You know? I mean, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. But I want to see the uncut Building 7. Because maybe a plane hit the Pentagon. It's, I, I mean, so. well, okay, but just release. I just want to see one video yes. of it happening. Right. Just show me one video. Do you think they have a video? Is There's there some 80 weird cameras video? on the Pentagon. Just show me one video of it happening. Is I think it probably happened. Is there one video of a plane hitting the Pentagon? There's one, but it's very weird. The frames yeah, are very yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. I, just show me the video. I, yeah. I want to believe Meanwhile, a plane hit the Pentagon. The rover on the fucking moon is taking beautiful video. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> this is fucking the issue. Camera. You imagine if you have a sh some shit that's like a thousand times worse than a, a yeah, one, like one of them doorbell cameras. Yeah, they got a thousand times worse. And it was viewing the yeah. goddamn Pentagon. Pentagon. They're, they're putting it together from cell phone cameras. <laughs> I get. I understand <laughs> that that it was technology was different. Just show me a video of a plane hitting the Pentagon, and I'm good. I'm with you. What do you think? It could be a missile. I don't know, but I just want to know why we just there's no one video. We got to see a video. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Why am I crazy for saying, can I just see one video of the thing happening that you said happened? Well, did you know that maybe this is not true and Jamie's going to be checking this one out soon. Um, the area in the Pentagon that got hit was refortified, was the same area uh, where they were doing the accounting. Yeah. Where they were trying to figure out where the trillion dollars is missing that yeah. Rumsfeld was talking about well, on camera. Just that. I think the day before, right? Wasn't yeah, he? it's an interesting situation. Didn't he say that there's like missing money? Like they're yeah, trying to like figure Rumsf out. Yeah, like wasn't Rumsfeld like out on the lawn? Like these people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, what are they doing? They just start uh, doing. You're press. not in a bunker. You're out on the lawn. I don't know what happened. I mean, listen, it was something crazy, like trillions of dollars. Two point three. Ah! So two point three trillion. Oh my god. I mean, you know. And so the next day. See if that's true that that area of the Pentagon that held that the accounting. I don't think they tell you what. Just see if you see if you can Google the area of the Pentagon that was hit contained the accounting offices. Jamie, I, I believe, know, I I believe the dark web will have you it. That. The dark web will have it, Jamie. I feel like I read that, though. I, I, I know the I, I understand your suspicion, yeah. but I just like you to just. I'm, I'm trying to lie. I, already I was heard that Building look, Seven something. had a lot of financial records in it. <gasps> that's what, that's I what I heard. That's what I heard. Is I, it Enron. NSA, I don't know. CIA, 
all the satellite dishes that were pointed at Epstein. Listen, here's the thing Island. with the way I look at conspiracy. I don't want to believe in any of them. Right. That's the whole thing. Like, I want there to be a plane hit the Pentagon. I want, I want it all to be what it is. I, I have but no investment. We know that a bunch of elites were going to an island to have sex with underage girls. Yeah, there's of course they they could do whatever. They don't but care. We, we also know, like, hey, how much of this is true? Like this right. is this is a wacky one. Yeah, this is one that if you told your mom yeah. like ten years ago, she'd be like, "Timmy, you're back on the drugs." Yeah, yeah right? she would. Yeah, she'd be like, "The fuck is wrong with you? No one's going to an island to fuck kids." Right, but it's the same thing. It's like now that that's on the table, you look at other events and you're like, "Well, we don't know no. necessarily how all of these things happen." No, we don't know. We don't know. We, we don't just, know. We just have to go. There's a, listen. There's conservative fire fi- like fire companies from Queens, right. from out by Long Island that like because they've gotten sick and stuff have demanded like a new investigation. Mm. And these are not like crazy people. These are people that just go listen. We're all dying from first responders and things. We just you know we want to know exactly what the hell we breathed in and what the hell's going on. Well, it's all the uh, burning chemicals from the the basement of the building, right? Wasn't that the I idea? Guess those fires burn forever. I guess those, that's what it is. Yeah, those guys got so many of them got sick. So many of them got yeah, cancer. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrific. It's really it's you really know, fucked D- up. Donna Summers died from that. Donna Summer, the disco person. Yeah. Well, I don't really care oh, about that. Some hot. Stop. I'm kidding. Don't. What? How dare I you. like her? She was amazing. She's great, but how did, was she saving people at 9 11? No, no, no. She had an apartment that was near the, the site of the <laughs> building. Like Donna Summer's running into the building. Dude, I think you live down there, man. If you have an apartment down there and you're you can't still move, fucked, you're breathing that air, man. Interesting. She died of lung cancer, I think. I, I thought she was a smoker. I don't think she was. I thought she would just smoke cigarettes and you know do coke and live a fun disco How life. How dare you? I think she found the Lord. I had no idea she was a first responder. After she, uh, you know, she gave up on all that hot love. She, she was going through the, the wreckage. Yeah, no, God she bless was her. not going through the. She wreckage. was just living. She was there. Just living in her apartment. Okay. I think that's the the idea. Of course, people. I'm, there there are people that are probably very sick. Oh yeah, man. yeah. It's a tr- and they were lied to about the risks. Well, I don't think anybody knew. That's true. Nobody had ever had to endure a, an inferno in the basement of a gigantic building in yeah. a metropolitan city that lasted for weeks. It's crazy. Right after planes crash, all the dust is in the air, all the fucking pollutants, and yeah, particulates, and everybody's br- breathing all that shit in. I mean, you got to go back to work eventually, right? Yeah. So 100%. when do you go back to work? A week later, two weeks later? Guess what? The air's still fucked up. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear about Donna Summer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, but I'm Listen, wrong a lot. Can we see? A vi- can you pull up a video of Donna Summer breathing in the fumes at Ground no! Zero? <laughs> you fuck. She's great. I saw Jones Beach. She was really good. Did you? You saw I her saw live? Her Jones Beach live. What, yeah, what she year was, was great. This? She was she was older. She had you know she was it was her comeback. It was like mm. the 2000 and Donna uh, Summer blamed 911 for lung cancer. This was like 2000. She was coming back. She released an out like a greatest hits album. You and your ad blocker, you son of a bitch. Those ad blockers. Yeah. They, my those my producer, know Ben, it. has them too, and he's always Look got that. A- Donna Summer, 911 gave me cancer. Well, yeah. that's not a fun song, is it? No. That's not a fun Donna song. Donna Summer was convinced that inhaling toxic air after 911 gave her the lung cancer that eventually killed her. TMZ has learned. Source close to the singer tells TMZ. We were hearing this morning that Donna was in a New York, in, in New York City during 911, living at an apartment near Ground Zero. Donna yep. became almost paranoid about breathing the air, which was heavy, you, with a rancid yeah. odor. Oh, gotta move. Jesus. You gotta move. Gotta oh my move. God. In the months and years following 9-11, Donna's feelings intensified. One source tells us that when he was around Donna, she would constantly spray some sort of disinfectant in the air. Danny Terrio, the horse, host of Dance Fever, tells us <laughs> when he was around Donna post 9-11, she would hang six sheets in her dressing room to prevent dust from coming in. Well, oh my God. She sounds like she did die of it. Yeah. And she also yeah. sounds like she was being annoying in the end. <laughs> she sounds like she's being a little annoying. <laughs> With her sheets. It's a little annoying, Donna. Um, I, uh, yeah, I guess she probably didn't have the money to move. I mean, like, I don't know. You would think. Last dance. I mean, this. but yeah, my dad saw her once performing in bars. It was rough. Sometimes people just spend all that money, man. Yeah. They have nothing left. It's tough, man. It's a tough, it's a marathon career. Well, especially music and be- back then, like, who knows what kind of fucking crazy contract they were under. Oh, they were under you some. Know? Yeah. Yeah, they- where like you only get a certain percentage. Everybody else gets all the real royalties. Taylor Swift has that right now, right? She's got she's, something like that. She's got a problem. Yeah. Someone owns the rights to her song and she, she's not allowed to play some songs and 
she was she was uh, complaining on Twitter, telling. But I guess it's like someone buys the rights to and your that's song. It. You, you, it is what it is. Yeah, like if you're an artist, and I think. I think it's her manager, it's Scooter. Her, her former manager, right? Her former manager bought all the rights to her music. Yeah, man. There's like... It's, it's a, what it is. It's you a know, dirty business. It's a dirty game. That's the dirtiest this game. This is what it is, though. This Don't is, you think in all of Hollywood, that's the dirtiest game? Because um, they they take a full 360 deal. Like, they'll, they'll take yeah, everything. That's a dirty game. Child acting seems also rough from mm -hmm. some documentaries I've seen. Oh, that's the roughest. Right? That seems rough. That's I was a child actor, but I failed. I didn't even make it to LA. I mean, I was doing like... I was doing shows in Long Island you know, high schools. Oh, good. It was rough. Thank God. Yeah. So you got a taste. I was a, uh, yeah, I got a taste. I mean, I auditioned like, for big thing. And I was a good looking kid too. I mean, that was, I peaked at like when I was like seven and a half and then it's mm. been a, just a steady decline. But the, the thing is kids that go into that, they're fought. It's bad. It's bad. Did you see Corey Feldman on Good Day New York when he's dressed in all black and he's like jumping around like, like an MK Ultra yeah. victim? It's like, oh, th this kid went through some shit that is horrific. Do you remember when he used to do shows? And he had Corey and his angels. Yeah, his yeah, yeah. I had friends that would just go see that because it was really the best thing to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... But music is can't, shitty. Nobody gets through. Nobody gets through. You don't make it out of this town alive, really. No. They'll eat you. This town not, will eat you alive. Not like that, you don't. Right. Not like that, you don't. This town will eat you alive. Yeah. Yeah. But we gotta. you still got to stay. You can't leave. You can't escape to some beautiful... Yeah. It's quiet luxury. Because you set a great example. When you're gone, it'll just be, you know, mm -hmm. God only knows who's going to step in. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be not good. Jesus Christ. Uh, you know? Who knows? You're so lucky you weren't a musician, right? Yeah, my dad was a musician, but it didn't really work out that well. I mean, he was really good and really talented, but he didn't really go to the next level. But music sucks. No, well, imagine it's tough. being in a band and you yeah. got to make sure the other guys show up at rehearsal. Yeah, it's tough. And they don't want to. It's hard. And one of the guy's girlfriends wants to get married and have a baby and wants him to quit the band and get a job. Yeah. And you're like, Tommy, we're going on the road. Well, what are you yeah. doing? Well, yeah. Well, Cindy really wants me to Well, that's why I didn't, around. I didn't get into sketch comedy. <sighs> I didn't get into improv. I didn't get into doing anything with like a team. Mm. I just wanted to be able to motivate myself. Yeah. Because that's, and I, I, I just, I manage myself. Do you? That's it. I mean, I, I'm no, no. I have a manager. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, just I, handle yourself, not a, a team of I, people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Oof. I have a guy that I work with, Ben, who edits Oof. all my videos, who's great, who I love. But I don't, I don't have an interest in like having a sketch group, right, right, of right. people. Yeah, I want to be able to be light and fast and do things that I want to do when I want to do. Stick and move. Stick and move, hustler. Are you still keto? You know, there's been issues, but it, <laughs> I, I, uh, there's been some issues. What's the issue? I, I, I can keto today. I've been keto today. All I've day. had, I had scrubbed that. The issue is New York. New oh, York's a problem. Pizza. New York's a problem. Calzones. All of the, you know, pasta isn't, listen, pasta. New York's a problem. LA, there's no good carbs. What? It's very, there's not a lot of good carbs here, Joe. There'd be Italian restaurants here. I mean, nobody, these people here are animals, to be honest. <laughs> It's 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 all drugs and you know whatever they're else they're into kids or whatever. The the point is they can't make a great like a linguine and clamp. You can't get that here. Mm, but in New here. York, but you, you go to here. Brooklyn, it's like come on. Yeah. So listen, there was small you can issues. Get it here. There's only a few places though. Okay, but and yeah. don't tell me them, please. Okay, but I'm I'm back now and it's there there. It's been a good positive trend and I sound like uh, uh, uh like uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Start spreading the news. Yeah, but I, no, it's it's come. It's it's all good. I, I text Shab food. He tells me if I can eat it or not. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, he's he had a cookie kid. though, but he had a cookie. He's got a T-shirt that says the Keto Kid. I you know. should buy it and wear it. And yeah. just re remind yourself every that day. That I won't do. He can give me a kid. free one because he doesn't need one. any money. He'll give you a free one. He'll give me a free one. But I, I mean, I saw him. He had a cookie once, and I said, "Well, how am I supposed to?" You're gonna be the Keto Kid. Yeah, Keto Kid too. The keto kid, the keto kid, just keto get, forever. Yeah, tell me, give you five of those. You wear one every day of the week. The, the problem was, I start, I started to like go to GNC, and they're like, "We have a keto brownie," and I'm like, "Okay, but that's a problem." <sighs> Most of those taste like shit. They taste like shit, and then they yeah. just make you want a real one. Yes. So 100%. you just have to not do that. Some of them are pretty good. There's some pretty good keto cookies. There's some keto cookie it's just companies. It's not that easy to nail. You know, it's not that easy to just fucking totally dial in. It's a tough. It's a tough thing to do. Yeah. You know, just eat regular food. Eat real food. The, the the thing for you, man, if you just cut out the sugar in the bread, cut out sugar, sugar in the bread. bread pasta. Yeah, no, I know. And, and I had, I lost 
and I still kept kept most of it off. I just got to keep going. Are you hiking or anything? Uh, I don't like hiking. So I don't like the way the earth looks in LA. The earth <laughs> looks like it's horrible. It's burned. It's an arid wasteland. But I like go like I'll go to areas like Hancock Park and I'll like walk around oh, okay. like wealthy areas. That's good. Hancock Park's nice. I like it there. Have you ever been to Griffith's Park? I went there once. I saw a coyote, uh, and uh, like he ran away. You gotta from bring me. a knife or a gun, but you should yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I well, who's gonna attack coyotes? Is fear coyotes. Me. They don't attack me. They'll, they'll, they look at me. And they the go, "It's a bear," guy. and they leave. Eventually, they're gonna kill a person. It might be you. One day. If I'm the first guy to get killed by coyotes you in Griffith Park, that's exactly the way I deserve you to be go. The first. They've been hiding shit. But I'm. You know what I'm doing now? Swimming because I used to be a great swimmer. I was a, th- well, a great swimmer. Didn't a guy get bit by a coyote at Griffith Park? Didn't they bit a homeless man? I think they bit a homeless man while he was asleep. Well, we're taking his word for it. You don't believe him? He had of a bite. Course, uh, yeah, he had but a bite I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's a, from he another from another homeless person. I think so. And they blamed him on a coyote. Yeah, he blamed what it was on that, Tom? Blamed him on That's a coyote. A coyote. <laughs> he wanted money from the city. Yeah. Did a homeless guy get bit by a coyote? Is, do you ever swim? Swimming's one of the greatest exercises. Montebello Park. Oh, Montebello Park. Two years yeah, ago, two years ago. Three well, years ago. Um, I do swim, but I got to tell you, I had a nightmare that you're just reminding me. Yeah. That I was swimming last night and there were sharks in the water. And I was swimming back at night from some place and everybody was just doing it. We're all just taking a chance and we're like, oh my God, we're so crazy. That's crazy. Like, this could be the time where one of us dies. And right. they're like, dude, people swim so often. It's so rare that people get bit by sharks. Yeah. And I was just thinking, yeah, but it does happen. It's not yeah. like, uh, seagulls don't kill people. Right. right. When you're around seagulls, you're like, are you sure? Yeah. They've never killed anyone ever. It can happen. I mean, I go to, I do it in a pool. I don't, but I'll go to the ocean too, but I'll swim like laps. So swimming's amazing. That, I gotta, that's the real, that's a great it's exercise. such a great exercise. It, it wears you the fuck out, and it's like super low impact. Like yeah, it's, it's low impact. Nothing. Because I'm not going to do like a jujitsu. Like, I'm not going to do something like that. But And I don't like hiking, and I don't really like running. What about like aerobic boxing? Yeah, maybe. Like a, like a housewife boxing Yeah, maybe. Class? Housewife boxing? Thank you for that suggestion. Yeah, where would housewife boxing be? I'd love to get involved with we'll housewife boxing. Find out boxing. where you are. What, where, what's a gym near you? Uh, well, I'm West Hollywood. I'm right down the block from the Improv. Oh yeah, there's got to be spots. The spot on Sunset that Justin Bieber in- invested in. That uh, oh, Unbreakable Gym. Is that what you're saying? I will no, no, the boxing place. It's on the corner. I will like absolutely Nights fight Sunset. women. Oh, you know what I'm I talking will, about? I will no. fight women. Yeah. At housewife boxing and swim and then and then get back on key. You know. Who do you want to challenge for the intergender championship of the world? I think me and Chelsea. You and Chelsea have to do it because it's not a gimme. She's a she's a tough woman. She's very mean. She'll come she's get you. she's a mean woman. She elbowed in me dick. in a plane one. She didn't even know that she was doing it. She was in first class. I was walking wow. to coach, and she just kind of went like this. Ooh. So I kind of want a rematch. I think it would be a good mm. thing for. I think it would for be comedy? a good thing for comedy for me to fight her. Okay. Um, dude, it's almost seven o'clock. Let's wrap this up. Wild. Thank Tim you again, motherfucking. Thank Dylan. you again. Now I'm sorry I got the show banned. No, it was from fun. YouTube. I it was, really it was a good last episode a good for all of us. I enjoyed it. I, enjoyed I appreciate. It very it. Much. Thank you, brother. Thanks, brother. Bye, everybody. Oh, tell everybody your Instagram, your oh, Twitter. It's Tim J. Dylan, D I L L O N, on Instagram and Twitter, and the Tim Dylan Show podcast, and on YouTube. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, dude. Thanks. A lot of fun, man. That was really fun. I hope Chelsea Handler does. It.